Where is everybody? Can I... Is this being sent or just... Just get out of that. Just X out of that. Just get out of that right there. Close the tab? Or yeah. just open another one? No, close the tab. Let's get ready to rumble. Did I not do right. this right? I put the thing on there. Uh -huh. One person on, two people on. Where are people seeing this from? Well, I thought I had YouTube and Twitter up. Did you see this on YouTube and Twitter? N no, that's just what I thought I... When I set it up, that's what I clicked on, I believe. Okay, it's saying we're live. No, it's not. No, 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 no. It's not saying that we're live. If you are in the audience, where are you watching this from? Yeah. What's up, Riv? I'm switching the... We do have the stream going, for sure. What's up, Revo? All right. Okay, guys, we're here. We've got a brand new, uh, I don't want to say DJ because this is a common DJ. As you can see back there, we've got technical difficulties, a thousand apologies. It's just one of those things, man. Um, but we've got, we got Portland, Oregon in the house. We've got Revo in the house. Okay, so you're you're finding oh, it right. on YouTube. Oops. Let me look at let me look at Twitter and see if uh, we're streaming on Twitter. I can't believe they haven't caught us on that yet. I know. It's yeah, we're live. We're time. live. We're live with on Twitter too. What's up, Giuseppe? Okay, guys, you guys know the drill. We're gonna go to a commercial break and then we're gonna introduce to you this alliance. Well, it's not an alliance. Is is it the it's Revo? Is, oh, Revo. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's a Revo stream, Revo dear listener. Revo and River, to my understanding. If yes. You, if anybody else was thrown in there at the last second, I don't know about it yet. <laughs> Revo and All right. River. So, May Day intro. If you see, we've got the little stream in the little stream picture in the corner. Again, we apologize about the lights in the background. They were crooked. I went to straighten them, and apparently that wasn't the right thing to do. <laughs> All right, so this is what Revo has to say. Welcome to the International Workers' Day, or May Day stream, brought to you by your local anarchist, River and Revo. That history takes us Wait, to Chicago. Wait, Revo's an anarchist? No. Well, I didn't know Revo was an anarchist. Your local anarchist, River and Revo. I don't know if it's necessarily saying that River is an anarchist, or are you saying you didn't know River was? No, River makes sense to me as an anarchist for sure, but yeah. Revo. Yeah, I don't know if Revo doesn't strike is. Me. I don't know if Revo is. It might just okay, be like River your local anar anarchist and Revo. I'm not sure. River wrote the uh, the initial one. Yeah. That history takes us to Chicago during 1886 Haymarket Riot, aka the Haymarket Massacre. The American Federation of Labor. Okay, so River is the anarchist. Okay. Yes. I figured. The I figured. The American Federation of Labor and other union or organizations, along with the anarchist and budding communist groups, had been pushing for the eight-hour workday before the 1886 general strike and had chosen May 1st to be the first day the eight-hour workday would be accepted nationwide. Wow. What, what was it, 12 hours prior to that or something? I don't know what the average was. Many I mean. business leaders refused to accept this, so began a general strike where over half a million workers refused to labor. After one day of speeches at Haymarket Square, a bomb went off, Jeez. killing one officer who had been dispersing the crowd, and many protesters were killed or arrested in the aftermath. Eight men were arrested for the murder of one of the officers. Their names for posterity were August Spies, Albert Parsons, George Eng Engel, Adolf Fischer, Louis Ling, Michael Schwab, Oscar Niebe, and Samuel Fielden. Of these, only three were actually present at Haymarket. All eight were tried at the same time, and the trial was pretty much just for show. Wow, five of those people weren't even there. I know. That's crazy. Nebi was sentenced to 15 years hard labor. The rest were sentenced to hang? Three were commuted to life sentences. Ling took his own life in jail before his hanging. In 1893, facing mounting pressure from many sides, the Haymarket martyrs were pardoned. The Second International... Uh, 
a labor and political congress had declared May 1st International Workers Day in solidarity with those slain as a celebration of labor victories across the world. Today we bring you songs of the labor movement, now seeming resurgent here in America where Starbucks, Amazon, and other companies are seeing their first labor unions in their history. We must remember our history and continue the fight for fair wages and for fair treatment in the workplace. Agreed. Agreed. That, okay, okay, so, so that for was clarity, the intro to our clarity, stream. For clarity, Revo is not an anarchist. Right. Uh, River wrote that up, so there you go. Right. Salute. That was the title. Just Salute for... to them. <laughs> okay. All right. Paul Robson, Joe Hill, is the first pick. This one was from River. He says, Joe Hill was almost, uh, was most, uh, so I'm so sorry. <laughs> Joe Hill, as most knew him, was a Swedish immigrant to the United States born in 1879 and executed in 1915 over what was popular, possibly spurious charges of murder, like due to his activism and union organizing. Joe Hill was a prominent member of the IWW, the International Workers of the World, known as the, the Wobblies? Joe, right? Yeah, it looks like it. Man. <laughs> Joe Hill is best known among unionizers for many songs such as The Preacher and the Slave, Casey Jones, The Union Scab, The Rebel Girl, and what is likely his best song, There is Power in a Union. This song is written as a discussion between the singer, telling of the singer seeing Joe Hill after his execution and Joe Hill telling him in no uncertain terms, none can kill what he stood for. The trial of Joe Hill was practically a show trial as the evidence that had that they had that Joe did it was he had had a red bandana in his hotel room. Oh, no. A not uncommon item for people in the IWW as red has been the color of labor for a long time and that he'd been shot the same day as the murders. He claimed his hands had been up where he'd been shot. He claims his hands had been up when he'd been shot, and the evidence seemed to indicate he was telling the truth. In an article for the socialist newspaper Appeal to Reason, Hill wrote, Owing to the prominence of Mr. Morrison, there had to be a goat, and the undersigned being, as they thought, a friendless stamp, a Swede, and worst of all, an IWW, had no right to live anyway, and, and was there duly selected to be the goat. Wow. The goat, as in like the scapegoat, like he went on, he got in trouble for what everybody else is doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, You're I do find, find it odd someone. that the man got shot the same day that he wasn't at this protest. Unbelievable. It's a little bit hard to believe. Paul Robeson, the name of the song is Joe Hill. I think one of my uh, Marxist friends sent me uh, a speech that Robeson gave on the floor of the Senate. Um, I think. Pretty sure this is the same guy. If it oh. is the same guy, that guy is pretty freaking powerful. Okay, okay, here we go. Paul Robeson, Joe Hill, let's do it. Song numero uno, let's go. Oh, River says I'm right, so that. There you go. All right, let's do it. Do you hear anything? I hear nothing. Not a sound. It also means we have another problem. I dreamed yep. I saw There it is. No wonder the thing has been so chippy. Why? I had I because I, I had left the game on. So who was running while that was going? So <laughs> yes, we solved the problem. Alright, well I'm pretty happy right now. Alright, all right, all right, go ahead. Alright, let's go. All right, so here we go, guys. Here we go. We've got the actual official uh, thingamajiggy. Here we go. As if that was playing in the background. They didn't tell us. Uh, yeah, I know. That you apparently was in the background the entire time we were talking. Wait, they couldn't. They could hear it or couldn't hear it? We and couldn't hear it. So to pick it up. Well, we couldn't hear it. So I don't think they could hear it either. I think it was just playing in that other tab. Nobody could hear it. Okay. The lady in the house. All right, all right, guys. Here we go. The name of the song is Joe Hill... Let's do it. Paul Robeson, let's go. I dreamed I saw Joe Hill last night Alive as you and me Says 
I, but Joe, you're ten years dead. I never died, says he. I never died, says he. In Salt Lake City, Joe says I, him standing by my bed. They framed you on a murder charge, says Joe, but I ain't dead, says Joe, but I ain't dead. The copper bosses killed you, Joe, they shot you, Joe, says I, takes more than guns to kill a man, says Joe. I didn't die, says Joe, I didn't die. And standing there as big as life, and smiling with his eyes, says Joe, what they can never kill, went on to organize, <laughs> went on to organize. From San Diego up to Maine, in oh. every mine and mill, <laughs> where the workers strike and organize, it's there you find your hill. It's there you find your hill. I dreamed I saw your hill last night. Alive as you and me, says I, but Joe, you're ten years dead. I never died, says he. I never died, says he. I never died. Song numero uno. That's pretty pretty crazy. Uh, I'm I'm actually pretty excited about this theme. You yeah, know, the, the workers, workers, the workers' yeah. rights stuff. Yep. This is people ask me like, what's what's been the biggest, you know, influence oh. on you? What have you learned since mm -hmm. you started the channel? And I I think for me, without question, the 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 Marxist case. The case that gets made mm -hmm. by Marxism, to me, I feel like has a lot of potential. I also think there's weakness in um, that ideology because it doesn't account for human sinfulness. So it puts all of the human evil on the rich people, not the yes. not everybody. So yep. I think that's a flaw in the system. But yeah, I do I think agree. that there are extremely important questions that the Marxists ask that... You know, you have to think things through. Like, for example, you've got a guy who has his own construction company, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But the the roads that he drove on, right? Like, the he, he didn't do that, right? So in order for him to get to his work, the roads have to be... There's a lot of logistical things that have to work in order for that guy to get there. Mm -hmm. So then the question is... Well, since you were dipping into the community chest to get yourself enriched, doesn't it stand to reason that you should then, you know, redistribute that to everybody else? So, so there's a lot of back and forth. Um, this song was, I don't even know what the style, what's that vocal style? I don't know, it just sounds like the old stuff. Because it, it sounds, you know, like falsetto is like on the high yeah. register and it's like an exact, like over exaggerated high register. I wonder if like, this Him like going this low is just... on the inverse of that, like, yeah. like you know, you know, because he just his voice was almost, and, and people say this a lot, but especially in this song, that it, it was it was almost an instrument in it in and of itself. Hold on, we got it. We, we got a kid. We've been having too many sick kids, so I don't know if we've got a situation. What happened? 
Okay. Yeah, does anybody know what the what that what that technique is? Like ooh, dog stone low like this. I don't I don't I'd love to know what the name of that uh, technique is because he employed it. Um. Yeah, the way that they used to like kind of tell it like a story that like they did like the singing like that, but it right. was almost like sing talking, <laughs> and then it would right. it would create like a a story, but it has that old. The aged sound to it kind of reminds me of the, um, that Rudolph, like the claymation version. Like they had oh. those kind of deep yeah, voices yeah, yeah, in yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. For me, like I'm, every time I hear that, it always makes me think of like, like value for some reason. Like, because I feel like back in that day, if you bought something, it lasted forever. Like the voice, you yeah. know what I mean? Like I felt like that long, I guess I feel like at that point in time, that was like, our grandparents and they were very like longevity of stuff was important now i feel like people create stuff to break it for it to break so you have to rebuy it but there was like this hey let's make stuff to last back then which i i really appreciated that level of excellence that went into the creation of stuff and in the music you kind of just it just kind of has that sound to it that like we're about to drop some knowledge on you, and you know what I mean. Like, mm -hmm. it, this is coming from some some wisdom, and then obviously they're. What's that song? When you wish upon a star. Da, 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 da. Where's that far? Was that, that over the when rainbow? You, yeah, somewhere over the rainbow. Yeah. This song sounded a little bit like somewhere over the rainbow. Oh, me. you think so? Yeah, it it, it kind of had that. Watch, I'm gonna I'm gonna play just a, a sample of it because I know that you hate. Babe, stop but saying watch. that. I, I hated it when I edited. Hold on, let me, let me shut this down real quick. I gotta have you guys. See, it, it goes in a different yeah. direction, but it looks yeah, like yeah, I, I I that initial. It, it looks like that initial progression started it, that whole thing. You see if what this, I'm saying? If this was ro if the roles were reversed, you'd be like, it doesn't sound like it at all. And if anybody agrees, it's because it's you. What? What do you mean? Anytime I say something sounds like something else, oh. when it's like a little bit vague oh, there, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're always like, no. And if anybody agrees, then you're like, that's because it's you. All right. So, so basically this is being, so that event happened and can, can you clarify to me what happened? So there was a, basically they were going to an eight hour work day instead of whatever it was that they were doing. Yeah. But the actual businesses were not really with it because they wanted their workers to work long hours. Yeah. And so the people are protesting and kind of striking. And then somebody got killed. I mean, yeah, homeboy homeboy was the ringleader. Like he was the ideological And he got killed. Leader, yeah, and he died. Okay. So and he's not the one that that the guy killed himself, that's right? Is having a conversation with no, I think this is the guy that because remember one person got killed there. Yeah, I dreamed I saw Joe Hill last night, alive as you and me. He says says I, but Joe, you're ten years dead. I never died, says he. In Salt Lake City, Joe says I standing by my bed. They framed you on a murder charge, says Joe, but I ain't dead. Oh, okay. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. The so copper this bosses one... killed you, Joe. They shot you, Joe, says I. Takes more than guns to kill a man, says Joe. I didn't die. And standing there as big as life and smiling Yeah, he got eye, executed by a firing squad. Not fun. What they could never kill went on to organize. Yeah, so so they killed dude um, and then, know, okay, via so firing squad. From San Diego up to Maine in every mill, mine and mill where workers defend their rights, it's there you'll find Joe Hill. Okay, so basically... They murdered him. He became a martyr for yeah. the cause. And now after that, like, he's basically out there defending people from San Diego to Maine. He's there for the workers. He's this, this, his spirit, his yeah. ideology. Yeah, exactly. This, he, 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 they were basically saying you cannot kill an ideology. You know, yeah. Which is what we, the conclusion that we came to, like, relative to the tally. Yep. The, the Taliban and all that. Like, they're just completely different yep. from Iraqis. He's just... They're, ne they're never going to be ruled. See what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. Okay. So, yeah. But yeah. I, I, I'm I glad when workers are able to stand up and say, yo. You know, it, sometimes it's kind of like one of those weird situations. So, before I lived in an apartment complex, my parents were landlords. 
So I've done both and I see what it's like. I remember complaints that people would have like the immediately when something gets broken, they want you there that day to fix it. Yep. That's not realistic though. Like anybody else that has a home, you're going to have to wait till the guy, the repair guy can come over. So you're looking at a week and a half, two weeks. Um, but at the same time, like when you're, when, when you're in an apartment and you're dealing with some of the frustrations that, that you can tell that people are not fixing what they need to fix and that they're they're too lazy and you you start realizing you can call them a bunch of times and they're just going to do what they want they may or may not fix it. you know what i'm saying like and i think that 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 it can be like that if you're the you're the owner of the company versus you're the worker of the company i think that a lot of times workers think that the boss is getting paid so much and that's not necessarily true like i remember like when my parents owned apartment buildings because you're using the money that's coming in from your tenants to actually pay off the building, you don't have, like, that's not all extra gravy money. And, and that's what a lot of people thought. So they thought, oh my gosh, you know, they're getting X amount of dollars per month from us. Yeah. And they're doing shit. You know, they, they thought that you weren't doing, they aren't seeing all the behind the scenes stuff. So, um, so sometimes I think that that happens between bosses and employees. Like, I think that the people, the owners of the company, they've probably, they've, they've struggled a lot to get their company to the place that it's at. And so they want to make the most that they can. And the workers like, yo, you know, we're the one that's keeping this thing afloat. You're not doing the, you're not doing the dirty work here that we're doing. But I, I think that that problem is always going to be there. But I think if people are aware that like, if you're the, if you're the one that owns the business and you're aware of the fact that you're going to want to be greedy and you're going to want to cut the paycheck of everyone around you so that way you can just do more of whatever it is that you want to do. And if you're aware of that, then you can say, okay, I'm not going to do that. Like, let me give these people like a fair, like, like a really fair wage, you know, but simultaneously, if you're the worker, you can't look at it as like, yo, we're, we're keeping this thing afloat because the person that had that business, if, especially if you're the ones that started it, they probably put a lot of tears, sweat and, you know, grind in on this business. So I think that there's two Two sides, but I definitely think that the the worker has had the short end, like even with minimum wage being what it's been, like the fact that we have to have a minimum wage, you know, yeah, is evidence that we have a problem. Yeah. It, it, Why, do we have a problem? It's just fascinating to me that Sean? all of us were raised to be um, workers. Right. <laughs> yeah. Like, that, like yeah, that was a crazy realization. Yeah, like I saw, I saw one meme that basically said they'll give an 18 year old, you know, X and thousands of dollars for a student loan, but they won't give that same kid the same amount of thousands for a business loan. See what I'm saying? So like, that's a good point. So, so, yeah, I'm not, I'm not dissing the college pipeline at all. I'm not dissing university. I mean, we need, mm. you know, we need all that. I'm just saying. Mm. There are different routes that people could go through, but our society is basically biases it toward yeah. everybody being a worker or the majority yeah. being workers for a small group of people. Whereas with the internet now, like, you know, the whole myth of scarcity thing is, is gone. There's 8 billion people on the planet. More and more people are joining all these social platforms every day. Yeah. I know everybody likes to announce, I'm leaving, I'm never coming back. But the fact of the matter is, they all you generally come back like this is the this is the market square of ideas. So mm -hmm. now you can be extremely impactful. Yeah. Um. As as a protester because you can create and the other thing too is like now you've got logs of everything. So somebody said something reckless, it's on it's on camera. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like most mm -hmm. people like so like when I'm looking here, this is a guy who obviously becomes a the the rallying point for all these people, and I wonder about. What is it, or maybe this is just a divine principle, but the fact that somebody has to be sacrificed in these movements, right? Um, yeah. Like, that's the crazy, it's almost messianic, like, you know, a lot of guys in the civil rights movement didn't make it out, you know, Martin didn't make it out, you know, like, they did Judas and the Black Messiah, talking about that, like, there were a lot of guys that just, like, it's crazy to yeah. me, like, how targeted our government has been to maintain certain institutions. And obviously it's not just black people. I mean, they hung John Brown. I mean, John Brown though, I mean, that's a different story I'd say because he was a combatant 
and he was killing folks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so it's yeah, like, yeah. okay, like I, you know, that, I, I understand that. Just man to man as, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, like this, this is a really good opening shot. Like this is about an ideology. It's not about one person, which is one of the reasons I think that the, the, the labor, labor sensitive individuals, our, that demographic is more likely to make that mistake than not. So, um, yeah, really, 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 really good, good start of the, what, what did you give it? Uh, 8.6. Shout out to Justin from Portland, Maine. Gang shit, bro. What's <laughs> up? Um. 8.6 for me. What are you giving it? Uh, I, I'm going to give it a solid 8, 8 itself. Uh, obviously that kind of music like sound wise it doesn't really do much for me mm -hmm. um but lyrically especially in the context of where we're at right now like right now we've got you know last year we saw regular people go up against probably the biggest in the world with amazon mm -hmm. um i think amazon won that eventually like the kid won but then they was an appeal, and then Amazon was able to convince other people to kill their own union. I, you know, I, I don't know what happened. But the fact of the matter is, the fact that there was even an Amazon protest like that does show us change. And I think yeah. songs like this, looking into our history, hell, even knowing who Paul Robeson is, I yeah. think is really, really important. I agree. Because if... And, and Riv confirmed that's the guy I'm thinking about. Like, if it's the guy I'm thinking about, like, dude was, like, confrontational. Like, he was, like, Malcolm X level when they were trying to interrogate him and say that he was a, a, a communist. Oh, and, really? You know, and this is, like, almost during the McCarthy really? time when, you know, people were in a lot of trouble. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Um, I'd argue Amazon getting one union in the U.S. is a huge win. It is. It, it's an absolutely... It's absolutely um, a huge, a huge win. For sure. For sure. We will be coming right back there. Listen to the night has just begun. Yes. We're right. Song number one. So we got, we got lots to do. We'll be right back. <laughs> we shall return. I'm Ben. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. As Sorry says, 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Already wearing PJs. Buy our merch indeed, and Chow shall lead them. Yes, dear listener. We are back. We have returned. Are we, are we ready to record? Get a diaper on these guys. Okay. So, uh... I am free for about three minutes, so you guys can do and ask me anything. We do this all the time when we have uh, interruptions and intermission in the show. But the show must go on, dear listener. The show must go on. Uh, song number two is coming up. Uh, I'm going to tell you guys the name of the song. You can, you could read the intro. Hold the Line by a dude named Pete Seeger. Hold the Line um, by uh, Pete Seeger. I'm going to, 
I'm going to read you guys. I'm going to read you guys the uh, the the little intro thingamajiggy. Some of our DJs, and this was a collab. I love you too, buddy. This was a collaboration of Revo and the Big Homie. Um, so here we go. So I'm going to read you guys the intro. Revo picked the song specifically. Here we go. This song tells a story about a concert that was held in Peekskill, New York in 1949 that Pete Seeger and his group of the time, The Weavers, performed at. The concert's organizer was actress-singer Paul Robeson and the Civil Rights Congress. Paul Robeson in this time had become outspoken against the KKK for civil rights, the decolonization of Africa, anti-Jim Crow legislation, and peace with the USSR. Remember I was saying they were trying to say dude was a commie and all that? Well, there you go. Uh, Anybody that tries to make peace with the USSR is automatically bad. We should always, always, always be in a posture of war and aggression when it comes to uh, uh, Russians. That that was my editorial edition, not not Revo's. We continue. This had drawn the ire at the t of those at the time who were pushing the Red Scare. When the concert was held, a mob shouting racist terms for African Americans and Jews, and burning crosses began. A riot at the concert. They attacked concert goers with baseball bats and rocks. The Peekskill, Pil the Peekskill police sat on the sidelines arguing it was outside their jurisdiction and wouldn't call for state troopers. The, court, the concert was postponed and held again a few days later, but this time with left-wing unions forming a wall of defense around the concert to hold back any violent protesters who came. Over 140 people and numerous vehicles were severely damaged wow. as police stood by, um, but the concert was able to go on. Damn. These guys are in mortal combat with this, this shit, bro. Holy smokes. Okay, guys. Here we go. Uh, Peter Seeger? All Did right. That, that yeah. right? Peter uh, Seeger. Pete Seeger. Hold, Hold the line. The line. Hold yeah. the line. This is going to be interesting, inshallah. Hold the line. Let's do it right now. Let me tell you the story of a line that was held by many men and women whose courage we know well as with they held a line at Peekskill on that long September day We will hold the line forever till the people have their way Hold the line, hold the line As we held the line at Peekskill we will hold it everywhere Hold the line, hold the line we will hold the line forever till there's freedom everywhere. There was music, there was singing, people listened everywhere. The people, they were smiling, so happy to be there. While on the road behind us, the fascists waited there. Their curses could not drown out the music in the air. Hold the line. Hold the line, as we held the line at Peekskill, we will hold it everywhere. Hold the line, hold the line, we will hold the line forever till there's freedom. For the grounds were all surrounded by a band of gallant men. Shoulder to shoulder, no fascist could get in. The music of the people was heard for miles around. Well guarded by those workers, their courage made us proud. Pull the line, pull the line. As we held the line at Peekskill, we will hold it everywhere. Hold the line, hold the line. We will hold the line forever till there's freedom everywhere. Trying to get into it. <laughs> when the music was all over, we started to go home. We did not know the trouble and the pain that was to come. We got into our buses and drove out through the gate. We saw the gangster police 
their faces filled with hate. Hold the line. Ain't that chance? Hold the line. As we held the line at Peekskill, we will hold it everywhere. Hold the line. Hold the line. We will hold the line forever till there's freedom everywhere. Then without any warning, the rocks began to come. The cops and troopers laughed to see the damage that was done. They ran us through a gauntlet to their everlasting shame. And the cowards there attacked us Damnation to their name. Hold the line, hold the line. As we held the line at Peekskill, we will hold it everywhere. Hold the line, hold the line. Kinda, we will kinda, hold the line forever till there's freedom everywhere. All across the nation, the people heard the tale and marveled at the concert and knew we had not failed. We shed our blood at peak skill and suffered many a pain, but we beat back the fascists and we'll beat them back again. Hold the line, hold the line. As we held the line at peak skill, we will hold it everywhere. Hold the line, hold the line. We will hold the line forever till there's freedom everywhere. Woo! Okay, this, this is what I have to say. That old music, it makes me feel like a lot more of us could have jumped in on the music scene. What do you mean? Just hold the line. Oh, oh, yeah, hold yeah. Hold the line. Yeah, it's but like, what, what, what year was that? What year was this song written? What's your guess? Um, 64. There's nothing written here. Ah, 61. Ah, 61. Pretty close. I was pretty close. close. I was close. Okay, so one, when I hear music like that, it's it's very like simple sounding and like lyrically, they just were really getting their point across. You know what? I think that it's good, good for people to have a cause. Like, you have this to. brought yeah. all the workers together to say, like, fuck you to the other people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fuck you to the cops. Also to the, you know, the fascists. But, like, right now, it feels like everybody's a fascist. That person, they're over there. Those are fascists. Those are turfs. Those are this. Like, it's all this name calling that actually, like, sometimes I'm like, I wish that I could, like, pause these videos and be like, what do you mean by that? What exactly did the person do yeah. that puts them in that category? Like, what does that category mean to you? Because that name that you're calling somebody, like, people are getting called fascists that are not fascists. They're just saying that so they can discredit what the people have to say. And I think that we have to be really careful that, that we're not getting bamboozled by that. And probably, maybe that's not something that happened. Maybe, like, people on our channel are pretty, like, eyes wide open to seeing, like, the minute, you know, a name comes out that hold on what are these people actually trying to do because i think that it, we're, people get discredited and not listened to because they get a name labeled on them and then people just disregard them because of that but like i think to have been there at this time when everybody could agree that uh the workers weren't getting treated right this is probably when was like when like industry started when everybody the industrial kinda, revolution all yeah that when yeah. was that the end of the 19th century pretty much why? Well, I I don't know much the about roaring, like you the Roaring Twenties and the whatever Thirties, whatever, whatever. You know, um, so what? What Industrial Revolution? When? So so what are you saying? Like after the after the Industrial Revolution happened, what? Well, I I just think like the to me okay. So it start the its start and end were widely debated by scholars, but the period generally spanned from 1960 to 1840, uh, 1760 to 1840. Mm -hmm. It's a very long span of time. But like when you see the pictures of like the, the videos of them all like walking into like these factories yeah, and then like the way that people look, like I, I just don't think that like if you're working people to the point that you like, 
stripping away their humanity and people are just working inside like makes me emotional just stuck inside of a factory for for such a big portion of their lives and people are working so hard just to be able to to survive not live not like go out there and have fun and have some date nights and like some people are just like working to put food on the table and it doesn't amount to much more than that and i don't think that that's right i think that you know if i look at the way my grandfather worked he should have had a lot of nice stuff like you work that hard to the degree that he put to out. The, right, that's what I'm saying. Like if people are willing to work hard, then then I don't think that hard workers, I don't think the system should be set up so that way hard workers can't really get that far. Because then people start saying, well, then I need to find some shysty side hustle to be able to make some money. Because yeah, now, now I mean, it's it's really terrible for vulnerable women now because they all think. Not they all, but it, it, it's a thing where a lot of them believe well, I'll just do OnlyFans. Yeah, I they think don't want to do they don't want to do the two two jobs or whatever to make ends meet. Like they they jump. What they don't know is that just like with YouTube or everybody or any other channel yeah. that's that's populated with millions of people or whatever, you've got to find a way to differentiate yourself, right? And and so what they they don't understand like it's not that easy. And you would assume, like, well, I mean, if I, females generally, if I take off my clothes, I'm going to get the guy's attention. But think about who these people are competing with anyway. Right. Like, you're competing with airbrushed or whatever, porn stars or whatever, whatever. I, I just, so, yeah, you, you're right. Like, I that's why I thought that your explanation of what is biblically, um, like, because a lot of times people throw around, like, slavery in the Bible. Yeah. And, like, the definition of what what a slave and a master was was when you were actually in debt like you had to do something based off the debt that you had they, and i think that people are a lot of times are in that situation where the school debt or the debt is just accruing and then people end up saying well you know what i'm just going to do the only fans thing and i think that when somebody enters that based off of that reasoning that uh, i'm not i'm not a fan of that because i think like if you, regardless, I think that as you age, that there are going to be regrets that are going to connect to that. You know, yep. like that one girl that we saw, she said she you almost couldn't have like a normal night after that. Because once people know like that, it's honestly no offense to anybody, but it's like a it's like when somebody gets cancer. And if you hear a cancer patient, they're like, I don't even want it to get out. Because the second that somebody finds out I had sick cancer, then that's all they see you as the cancer patient after that. Right. There's cancer, cancer, cancer. Why? And I think the same thing happens to an OnlyFans person. Once that gets out, then, you know, you're going to have some people that are just going to be like, okay, whatever, that's your job. But you're also going to have other people that like, that socially are just like awkward people that will be like, oh, that video. Oh, like in the middle, it's like, yo, that's the job that they're doing. And they don't want to talk about that right now. And why would you just bring that up? Like, I, I hate, I hate that shit so much, man. Like where we are right now, economically and the, the way that OnlyFans markets itself. Yeah. Is this idea that, you know, hey, are you a mom? You got a couple kids. Just do this and that in front of your little webcam and you, you're, you're set for life. It's like... No, it, no, does, that's no, it not, doesn't. That's not how it works. It's going to add so many complications because now you've got your kids that eventually are going to find out about that information. I mean... It, it's it's bad. It's it's. And the other thing too is, you know, Dudley, you're saying everyone wants easy money, no conflict, no stress, just just easy. Ain't gonna happen ninety percent of ninety nine percent of the time. Like, I think that work is going to take something from you. You know, it's gonna require some of your energy, some of your whatever. But like, I think that doing OnlyFans stuff, um, I think that the long term effect that it has on the girl, see. I don't believe it's easy money. Like, I understand what you're saying. You're like, oh, well, how how difficult it's physically simple. is it it's to do this? Muzzy. Right. But, but it's, it's not, not easy. easy money because you have to put so much of yourself on on the line or on the side. And, that, and the thing is, like, you can hate your neighbor and move away from your neighbor, but you can never move away from yourself. Like, you're yourself for the rest of your life. And so whatever decisions and choices that you make, you have to face those decisions within yourself. And I think that there are people make those decisions 
and then when they when they regret those decisions later the way that people are like some of the comment section when people were changing their mind like how harsh and rude and horrible like especially about doing, the women about were. doing the change their mind about what yeah doing only fans and, and regret having regrets about it and and basically the women were just like well <laughs> you put yourself in that situation zero compassion no empathy for these girls like well okay yeah they did they did put themselves in that situation but now they're trying to get out of that and they regret it like how about you stand beside them but i don't know man yeah yeah i just think that hi ian oh what's up ian yeah, I mean, all, all those all those points are very very well taken, and like <clears throat> most of us, when we're young or if, if you're under some sort of duress, everybody can look at snapshots in their life and say, "Okay, that was a time I was just completely spitting out. I didn't know which way it was." Yeah, up. yeah. The problem for OnlyFans is that most of us, when we have those episodes in our life. We don't have them chronicled in detail on a camera. Jesus. So mm. you're seeing this person at their lowest, at their least, um, at the at their most vulnerable so socially and economically. That's what you're. That's what you're looking at, and that's not a person who's gonna yeah. get out from that yeah. business. What they really think, like, what it does is is it freeze mm. frames in time. You. Jeez, so you're you're, look at Delaney. you're 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 freeze framing that that time of you and that unfortunately is the way that people are going to see you like it, now you know the next generation coming up man when we were coming up man it was she lied to you about having a boyfriend or whatever like now it's like yo like there's so many questions like now if i was dating you'd have oh. to fill out like a 400 page questionnaire oh i would have to see like <laughs> there's just so many things where it's like what the fuck yeah um yeah but a lot of these girls like yeah i get what you're saying and you're saying like a lot of them don't regret it and they're but you can't say when they're in the middle of it you're not going to get the straight story it's when they when they leave it that's when you hear, you know, because when they're in the middle of it, like there's a lot of stuff that people have to do to stay in the middle of something so you can, you know, gin yourself up to stay there and keep doing it. So, you know, all the like, oh, this is this is female empowerment and stuff like that literally doesn't empower you. It, it, it's going to end up making you feel like you've lost so much, yeah. which is a lot of times I think what is going on with the The more time I think about the Me Too movement and, and the difficulties of... <laughs> Oh my god so today you you didn't know about this so our three-year-old is outside he likes to hang out with this five-year-old and so they're on the chair well she's on the chair he's standing beside her they're talking because he got a new watch for his birthday so they were laughing about the watch he was really feeling like you know really cool about his watch and then he says it has a lot of pictures on it yep yeah he recorded a video of his birthday so he was showing her some different stuff they were laughing their heads off and then all of a sudden i'm like downloading the videos for the stream and then all of a sudden i hear like this kiss sound and she goes oh you kissed me and i'm like um excuse me i'm like you can't just kiss people and he looked at me like really you're gonna involve yourself you're, you're here. Involving yourself in my game. Well, the girl told me. Well, I liked it, so. <laughs> I'm sure she did. <laughs> no, Mr. Oh Orion, but we gotta have a conversation we with him do, about. We do. We do. Yeah. So I talked to him about it later, <laughs> but I definitely think we need to circle back around. But anyway, like there, like there's like, I don't even know why I was telling that story. But we're talking about, you know, how bad economic situations. Oh, the lead Me Too to stuff and whatever. Like, these, uh, so yeah. now that I have sons, I think about how difficult it is. Like, because there's the whole like, <laughs> you're out with a girl. Should you kiss her? Should you not kiss her? Yeah. Like, should you ask her? Should you not ask her? If you ask her, then you can come off looking real corny. If you don't ask her and you just kiss her, then she can be like, yo, me too. I didn't want you doing that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and I think that there's a lot of times that a girl. A girl will go into a sexual situation thinking that more is going to come out of it than than what does. So when the person doesn't want to like carry on a relationship and it looks like, oh, wait, they just wanted that and that's all that there was. Like that's a super disappointing feeling. And I think that that feeling of feeling taken from and taking advantage of is sometimes why girls will be like in the aftermath, be like, oh, wait, 
that what I didn't consent to that, even though they were going with it in the moment. But I do think that there's there's a lot of difficulties in that regard. But but certainly certainly taking advantage of girls in that situation, like holy shit, like yeah. she's, Delaney said, girls are you know up there saying, I just turned eighteen, come check out my OnlyFans, like. Oh my word! The decisions that these girls are making at at, at such a young age, I mean, and the effect that that's going to have long term that they don't realize, because like the internet is friggin' forever, like that shit's going to come out when you don't want it to. Your kids might find it. Like, oh my god! Your kids are definitely going to find. it. And you know what's probably going to happen is one of their friends is going to show it to them. They're going to be like, "Yo, your mom." Yeah. So here, so these guys are protesting because they're trying to stymie all that shit. Yeah. And it's crazy to me. Like, imagine being a cop and inflicting violence on a bunch of kids who are participating in the democratic process. Mm -hmm. This is what the founders... We all know the founders had an extremely dark side. And we all know that they had some terrible ideas. But they also had extremely brilliant, like, once-in-a-lifetime, once-in-a-generation type idea. And... The ability to protest, to criticize government, cr- criticize those in authority. Americans take that for granted. The default position yeah. is this bullshit. Yeah. The default position is Kent State. Like, that's the default decision, disposition of, um, of human beings when you vest them with mm-hmm. so much power mm-hmm. as the police have. I mean, yeah. police have, I mean, this, like, qualified right immunity at this point, right? They got qualified well, immunity. Well, explain so. qualified immunity because you guys are not going to believe this shit. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it absolves the, the cop of culpability um, for actions that he takes if he can if he can present at any level, hey, this is why this happened. Like some of some of the some of the instances were pretty crazy, but like I cannot imagine because here's my understanding about cops. A lot of people, yeah, are like, like oh, literally all cops anything can get them off. Like one of the times, the person uh, was sitting. They, they, they were sitting and they stepped with their right foot instead of their left. Right. And so because it was the right foot, and the and in the past the person the got foot, so the person got in trouble. Offense. Then they, because it wasn't it wasn't a repeat offense. Right. Right. So then the cop completely gets off. Basically, it allows cops to be able to to abuse their positions, and that's what that's what's been been happening. I mean that. You know, this one kid, Jason, that, that we were speaking out against was having a mental breakdown. His parents called His the cops called, yeah. because he needed help. And and the cops showed up and, like, they ended up tackling him. They killed White him. They kid. shot him. White he kid. died. Like, a kid was 17 years old or something like that. It's like the parents called you to friggin' help and then you just went in there with just out of control and then they and then there's no repercussions for that so there's nothing that makes them say let me take a pause here this mother called because her 17 year old kid is having a mental breakdown is does she want him dead no the kid didn't even have a weapon Mm -hmm. so stuff like that happens over and over and you're like what is going on with these cops and in the song it says then without a warning the rocks began to come the cops and troopers laughed to see the damage that was done. They ran at us through a gauntlet, their everlasting shame, and the cowards there attacked us. Damnation to their name. See, this is this is why, like, a lot of the extreme Marxists, they'll always say things like, power never surrenders voluntarily. And obviously, there's an implication oh, oh, under oh, yeah. underneath that. Uh-huh. Right? Yeah. Like, these people, it, it's crazy to me, like, that during 2020, I was seeing this happen again. Unbelievable. You know, and, and it's funny too because I've got a really interesting relationship with people like Antifa, for example. Um, Antifa will, they believe in violence, obviously, but, 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 they also will show up, just like in this situation in like early 60s, where they, you had people. You know, surrounding the the corner, make everything, make sure everything was good. Yeah. Like, that's those are ops that Antifa does regularly. Regularly, they'll do ops like that. So okay. it's like because most people won't resort to violence, and because they believe that if you're a white supremacist or whatever, that you're automatically a violent Nazi fascist. So they go into the they go into the conflict. 
with that mentality. With that, yeah. Whereas a regular civilian is yeah. just going to make his voice heard, doesn't yeah. want a really a lot of attention, but does want to do his or her part. Yeah. He has no interest in that. So once shit starts getting to that level, see what I'm saying? See, and this is the other thing too. Hi, Amy. Um, the other thing is when when you have people in that situation where they're you know i hear a lot of times well we have to separate church and state and i understand where people are coming from but this is part of the the issue when you separate church from state and these actors are going out and they're just they're acting on their their own behalf there's there's nothing of there's nothing of god in there there's nothing of morality in there that's a standard higher than the laws that are there so for instance if if you have the church and the state kind of mixed in together then you can say okay cop when you go out there to, to do the law, like the scripture says that you're out there, you that you you don't bear the sword in vain. Like the reason that you have a weapon or the way you, because you're supposed to, to do this law. At the same time, you're supposed to love your neighbor like you love yourself, which if you simplified it, a lot of times, like I th I do this, I do this to myself all the time. I tell myself, somebody just broke into the house. The kids are upstairs. What am I going to do? And I, and I come up with these different scenarios. Well, then I always flip it. Once I decide that that person that entered my house is going to die, then I flip the script on myself and I say, okay, now this is somebody else's house and this is my kid that just went into their house and they just did what I did when I imagined an intruder coming into my house. And then I was like, well, what would I want them to do differently? Well, I don't want them to kill my kid. I want them to understand that, you know what, teenagers do stupid things sometimes mm -hmm. and they shouldn't have to die over it. And so, I, I don't know, man. Yeah, I mean, you know, he, he, he talks about they gathered shoulder to shoulder singing and then boom, here come the rocks, here come the cops, mm -hmm. here come the gangs. And, you know, Antifa, you know, these folks, they, they look, they, they perceive themselves to be the inheritors of that tradition in certain aspects they're right like I, I i can't stand them as as an organization like they've actively like been violent with people like yeah. I'm, you know i've, I've got to repudiate that at the same time though they do operate that way to 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 function as a sort of guard mm -hmm. and it, it it makes you wonder like it makes me wonder like what's going on with the church like why does antifa have yeah, enough um, background music a little loud um, what, why, why does Antifa, um, have the wisdom to say, hey, this is a church full of marginalized people. These people over here hate these people. We're going to go in there and, and, and make a barrier or whatever. It's like the church should be out there making the barriers, not participating in the violence, but just standing, you know, mm -hmm. in that, in that, you know, make that quarter and say, you, you know, you're going to have to kill us or do a bunch of crazy shit to us on camera. We're not going to touch you. Mm -hmm. You're yeah, going to have to, you're going to have to do this on camera and create a bunch of viral moments because we're not going to touch you. Like that's how the church should be engaging. Yeah. But because there's a gap, then folks like Antifa are going to do it and they don't share your worldview. Right. So they're going to take things to, a, to what you yeah. would consider an extreme. Yeah. But how extreme is it when you've got cops slamming octogenarians on their head, bloods coming out? I mean, that happened during the George George it's Floyd uprising. That tall old it was man, a tall old white dude that literally couldn't hurt a couldn't hurt anybody. They slammed dude on, cracked his skull open, blood coming out. It was it was. And then I thought the, the guy died. And then the it guy, was the, the, it was really bad. one cop turned around to like do some first aid. The other one grabbed Stopped him and him. walked yes. off. So so when you're capturing mm. moments like that on video. It's going to be very hard to convince somebody, hey, we need to put an end to the violence here. We yeah. need to stop it here. People yeah. are, people are, they're motivated by a spirit of vengeance. Yeah. And obviously, my community's relationship to police, but I mean, to be honest yeah. with you, the metal community's relationship to the police. Sure. Culturally speaking, people in our crew are are a little bit outside the box, a little weird, a little strange, and those are the people that that police kind of, yeah, you know. And, and again, a lot of this, like this dynamic with police, like we really need to interrogate this concept that we have this armed, um, dangerous people who have a license to kill, mm -hmm. like. We've got to we've got to do yeah. some 
<laughs> you see what I'm saying? Like, 100%, like, yeah. Could the forefathers have foreseen... I don't think that... Like, I'm watching a documentary right now on the, on the kid who... Um, uh, the Boston Marathon blew up the Boston mm-hmm. Marathon, mm-hmm. and th- they're they famously like quarantined a bunch of neighborhoods and went through with tanks and striker vehicles, all types of shit. And if I resurrected a founding father and said, "Here we go, this is yeah. America, yeah, uh, Northeast, right? Yeah. Like Massachusetts. I mean, you can't get any more Americana than that." And and I'm showing them this, and they wouldn't be able to tell the difference between that and the standing army. Like, no disrespect, but the HRT guys and the FBI, I mean, a lot of those guys are are, are better at combat, at least CQB, than, you know, Marines and all the rest of it. So it's like, you're not supposed to use the military against American citizens, but we've seen in Kent State, in this situation, Waco, Ruby Ridge... Um, I understand those people were weird. They were kooky. The Ruby Ridge people were white separatists. They, you know, whatever. But that doesn't mean we get to kill no. his wife right in front of him. Jeez. The Waco thing was crazy, but we all know what happened. Like yeah. the cops yeah. keep like, and again, it's it, it's not the cops as the individual. I think it's the system. Anytime you build an economic or social system that does not assume corruptibility, let me say it that way. Right. You have to assume corruptibility at every level of your if you're culture building. And yeah. so this is another one of those areas where it was like, mm, although the cynical side of me says, no, they knew exactly what they were doing when they stood this force up. You think so? Oh, well, I mean, a lot of it was connected to the vagrancy laws. Now, these Negroes got set free, and the 13th Amendment says you can only, you know, enslave mm-hmm. people if they're in prison. So now you have to create this entire force that's keeping tabs. You create these laws like no vagrancy that you can arrest them, throw them in jail, put them back on the plantation, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so that's how a lot of policing was done in the earliest inceptions of the institution. So, yeah. You, you can, but you can see here, though, that this was a class war, and, you know, there is obvious overlap. I'm not going to say they're identical, but there is obvious overlap between white um, downtroddens and black people in America. And so th- that was one of the things about uh, the Panthers, where they started working with skinheads and, and, and other people who were in a bad economic situation. They were like, look, we don't need you to like us, blah, blah, blah. You don't need us to like you, but we do have a common enemy. Once we get rid of that enemy, then we can go back to fighting each other or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they started working together. And then they started to disavow their racism on both sides once they started working together Mm -hmm. for a common cause for a better America. So this is not to say, you know, I hate the cops or whatever, but it it is something that's got to get dealt with in our country because we obviously... I think we're beyond, because of the prevalence of media and things like that, now we can see in real time what these folks are doing. Mm-hmm. And we yeah. can also see, like, how how egos drive, like, people are dying over the it's ego crazy. of the cop, all types of crazy Yeah, shit. see, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think it would be good if you had somebody that was kind of, like, overseeing, um, and you could move that person in and out of that position every whatever amount of years. But, but right. essentially, that person is, would be the morality police and this is the thing bc you were saying that no religion should be kept completely out of it but it's like if you if you keep religion completely out of it then you have no basis for saying that that the cop is morally wrong for the way that he's treating people that are less powerful than him yeah i mean morality is a metaphysical concept it's not something that you can measure in a lab Mm -hmm. so in my view i'm like secularists like figure it out like are we just piles of protoplasm and stardust or is there something unique about humanity yeah in which case everybody should be treated fairly and that would then create a just wage there's a number that's just and righteous those are all extremely complex and sophisticated mm-hmm. <laughs> um uh mental machinations so um do what you will with that um i this is another 8.5 for may Kind of folky. Reminded me of Don Francisco. You guys got to Google Don Francisco. Dude, it was the truth, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm going to give that one an 8.5. Clyde and the Mill Tailors are next. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? That sounds very good. Very divisive. I'm with it. Vin out. Three out. Gone.
I'm Ben. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. As sorry says, 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child shall lead them to buy our merch. I am signing in over here to get to the comment section. It's kind of an ask me anything right now because Vinny is gone. And I forgot my password. This is the one, this is one of the many things that I love about your Apple phone. You literally, it saves all your passwords in there. So you just go in there, you type the email address, then you look for Google. There it is. Imagine I just said it out loud. There. I literally almost just said it out loud. Okay. Ah. All right, you guys, ask me anything. Yes, it's me. I'm loud. All right. Update password. YouTube. Studio. Be quiet, please. All right. I'm gonna update the the thumbnail picture for the live stream. Vinny's coming in. There's still a few seconds for the ask me anything. Did anybody ever ask you a question? Uh, I figured these people would have a... Uh, questions prepared? Questions prepared. I, I haven't even looked. There, I'm getting the thumbnail picture up. All right, guys. Song number three. Song number three on... Uh, on this wonderful, wonderful occasion. Yes. The name of this song is... Hold on. Soraya, it'd be great if you could... Yeah, I was trying to get the thumbnail on there. Do buddy. that on the next commercial. Okay, here we go. All right, Clyde and the Mill Tailors. Which side are you on? This is River's pick. River says this is a very different mm. version of the original version of this song. And while I love the Pete Seeger and Billy Bragg versions of it, I feel Clyde and the Mail Tailors make a great version of it. The song is a wobbly song, the original speaking of bringing the Union into mining towns and how that was reacted to. Clyde includes a verse about the Ludlow Massacre, where the Colorado National Guard, alongside private security hired by the mine company Colorado Fuel and Iron, murdered 20 people. 12 of whom were the children of the mine workers. Are you serious? Along with the strike organizer, Louis Ticas. This massacre was the culmination of the Colorado Coalfield War, which was followed after by the 10 days of violence in Colorado by the strikers against the company. Yo, babe, the, the 
the security hired by the mine company of Colorado Fuel and Iron murdered 20 people. What the fuck? 12 of they whom were the 20? children of the mine workers. These people got to be... <laughs> Holy this shit. massacre was the culmination of the Colorado Coal Field War, which was followed after by the 10 days of violence in Colorado by the strikers against the company, obviously. This is not the only time this has happened. As before this incident in West Virginia, the U.S. Army had dropped bombs on mine workers during the Battle of Blair Mountain. I saw people saying Blair That's Mountain. insane. That is insane. One might ask, why were there children among these strikers? And the answer is simple. The workers had families. And before the massacre, they'd been forced to move into a tent city because they had originally lived in company towns where houses were owned by the company. The demands of the strike were simple recognition of the union. <sighs> Compensation for digging coal at a ton rate based on 2,000 pounds. Previous ton rates were of a long ton were of long tons of 2,200 pounds. Enforcement of the eight-hour workday law payment for dead work, laying track, timbering, handling impurities, etc. Weight check checkmen elected by the workers to keep company weightmen honest. Right to use any store and choose their boarding houses and doctors' strict, inf strict enforcement of Colorado's laws, such as mine safety rules, abolition of script, at the end of the company guard system. Ludlow and the Coldfield War shows that laws, if not enforced, are mere suggestions, especially for the rich and their owner class, and that workers, when organized, can bring about change as they as this was among many events, one of the things that turned people against company towns. History repeats as we don't learn our history from the labor movement. Had that last part that needed to be added in because it said my message was too long, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everybody's loving your shirt right now, Soraya. Good for you. I know. Usually whenever I wear it, Vinny changes like the color and so it makes it like this weird orange color, but it's actually like bright green, which I love. Uh, Jay sent me this shirt, so shout out to Jay. All right, guys, here we go. What side are you on? Is that the name of the song? The A. Uh, which side, which are, side you are you on? on? Yeah. Uh, Clyde in the. What is it? The Militailers? Militailers. Militailers. What's a Militailer? All right, here we go. Shovels and knives. Which side are you on, boy? Which side are you on? Which side are you on, boy? Which side are you on? Which side are you on, boy? Which side are you on? Be a union man 
Sing to one Bernard Sanders. Shout out to Bernie Sanders for betraying us all. Bernie Sanders was like, hey, hey, I bet you want Medicare for all. No, you're not going to get it. You're going to get Biden. There we go. There we go. Shout out to Bernie Sanders, man. And shout out to the Beatles for bringing us La this song. La ilaha illallah. <laughs> shout out. Yeah, shout out to the Beatles for this amazing song. Man, okay. Uh, John, I remember. You guys saw there, John Lennon made a uh, guest appearance uh, with this band. Go, go ahead, continue. Okay, I won't say who it was, but I remember mm -hmm. as a kid ha hearing conversations about the picket line. Yes. Because I knew somebody that was... Uh, striking. Did did he cross it? Did, was he oh, a scab? Oh no, no, no. They were. The person I knew built a casket and held it up. Said that's where the scabs were gonna go. They were gonna kill him. Oh my god. Yeah, it was pretty crazy la, back la, in the day, I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Uh, but yeah, see, I, you, I don't I'll think I don't think it was one-sided. I listen, Americans. You know, if you're not from this country, you, you really can't get it. But, I mean, they alluded to it. They said we had more than just pickaxes. So, this is my safety, sir. So, I mean... But, it, the, the problem is... This... When you're in that situation, if you don't have enough money, you have to cross the line. I know, I know that. But so the person gonna, that's the standing there saying, if you cross that line, we're going to kill you, is the person that's more privileged than the person crossing the line. Yeah, but Because these, you only have enough money to stretch so yeah, far. Yeah, these things are planned out in advance, so, like... But I, I see well, what you're saying. It's the same thing that happened with the NFL. With what the do you NFL. mean they're planned out in advance? For a family living paycheck to paycheck, it doesn't matter how advanced it is. Like they suffered for that, for that staying, staying out of there. I, I, I get it. I, I get it. But you know, and then I'm you had sure other that people I, that I were like, I, I got to feed I my disagree, family. I disagree, though, that it's a privileged position to take. We don't know the situation that that the union organizer is in. Why do we assume that the union organizer is in some better financial situation than anybody else? I'm saying that the person that's like, <clears throat> I want to stick with this, but I have to cross the line. Like I can't feed my family is in a worse situation than the, than the person that was holding the casket. How could you possibly know that? Well, I know the person holding the casket, what situation that they were in. And I'm just saying, you guy that's crossing the line and you're saying, and I'm you gonna know kill the other, you. You know the other guy too? No, I don't know their situation, but, you, but if you look at that, you just say, okay, one, they have to betray their other people that they work with because you're crossing the line. And themselves. And yourself. Like, I feel like that for you to cross that line means stuff was really bad for you, which means it must be worse than the person holding the casket. I don't see how that follows. I don't think it follows that every person that breaks, is a scab, breaks the line, whatever they call it. I don't think you can make the argument that they're always going to be financially destitute compared to the no, people I'm not, that are striking. No, I'm not making that argument. I am saying that that is something that happens and also the person that is that doesn't cross the line, they may be sitting in a bit of privilege because they have money that the other people don't have. Like, if you're living paycheck, paycheck to paycheck, there's yeah, nothing that, that you can my do. My question is, why are you assuming that about the people who stay loyal to the strike, though? They, that, could, they could be on... They're all on the same budget. They're all getting paid the same. I mean, that's one of the major reasons. Yeah, that but they, some people have family that's going to help. All them. I'm saying some is you can't gardens. you can't use the privilege card because they're all in the same situation. They're all working for the same company. They're all getting yeah, jerked I know. By but the same if you company. have if you have seven kids and somebody else only has one kid and you're all working I mean, for we're the a same unique, company, we're a unique circumstance. Like I see, I'm what talking you're saying about if, the person. The person I, I I'm see what you're saying about that. Kids. Me personally, like that's that would be unforgivable to me. If the person like if crossed we, if the we, line, if we, yeah. If we if we get together and say, hey, 
we're gonna do this, then you need to follow it through. Protesting and then doing it half ass has always, always, always been destructive to movements. Well, I think not a lot of times I don't necessarily think it was the workers crossing the line. I think it was other people that are like, you don't want to work, I'll work. And they would go in. Well, it's both. It's both, right? I mean, you, you got people that are... You, me, personally, I, I wouldn't do that. But I'm saying that in this circumstance, I don't know what I would say if the situation actually happened because the situ situation hasn't actually happened. I've proven to myself, like, I really... I don't care about my life very much as far as, like, oh, something bad could happen to me. Like, I've proven to myself over and over again. Like, I'm, I'm good with that. But I'm not good with my kids suffering. So... It's it's a it's a real issue, but the pro the yeah, thing that would the thing that would hold me behind the line is the fact that everybody else has kids too and they're suffering too. Yeah. They're missing Christmas too. They're missing Easter too. Yeah. So like, you know, and I gotta believe. I mean, I've never been part of one of these unions, but I gotta believe they're gonna say, listen, here's the calendar. We've got we've got ninety days. So stack up all your excess revenue or whatever in ninety days and make it happen. Mm -hmm. Like. There, there's there's a lot of ways to go about it but like i i i the, and this is probably just the the new york thing in me like i couldn't do that to my folks they all got kids too you see what i'm saying but it's it's a pretty terrible situation because these these uh these owners man of these companies dude like it's the worker has absolutely no leverage whatsoever no, and that's why they all strike together because they have leverage when right. they say, "Well, how about this?" Yeah, we're gonna withhold. It's we're so difficult for labor. you to yeah. whatever. Like, I think it's so crazy when when companies will hold out, and then they'll spend more in lost revenue than just saying, "You know what? People are that." You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. yeah, but at Riv is saying that um, they are all they are all pretty much in the same boat. The goal of the union of the union dues is to try to cover the costs of those strikes as well as keep the union running. So, I mean, it, yeah, but it's if you just have a, a family, terrible, horrible situation. If you have a family that has five kids and you have somebody who has one kid, do did they adjust? Like, because you're not getting more just because you have more kids. Like, when you go yeah, to work, I mean, you're making the same thing as the guy with one kid. Like, that's yeah, just it. Yeah, people, people cross the line all the time. And what I'll say is I understand it. Like, I could never condone it, but I, but I understand it. Yeah. In the same way, like, you know, like you've been doing dirt with dudes and then you see the dudes come around the corner with a gun. You're going to run and leave your friend behind when you guys were in the middle of that shit the whole time. Like yeah. It, ha it, you know, it happens. It happens. But yeah. I, yeah, I think it's terrible to even put people in the situation where a strike becomes necessary because you're you're telling when people are at that point, they're saying we're willing to suffer to get more money because this is already so bad. And I just think that's crazy. I think that's crazy. You own a company and, and people are in that situation in your company. Yeah. And, and again, like it, it's not like Jeff Bezos doesn't have the money. It's just it's that ego, man, like. Ego will make you do a lot of crazy, horrible it's ego, shit. You think? Oh yeah, it's like I'm not gonna let these people beat me. I'm not gonna whatever, whatever. He was, he was beat in the. You. Oh yeah, he was. He, he, like a couple of the conversations he had leaked. Remember, the, it was a whole COVID situation with that black dude. They had, remember, they had COVID at their site on Amazon. Yeah, oh, And yeah, then they were telling him yeah. not to say anything, and then oh, they yeah. fired him, yeah. and then he sued and he won. Well, yeah. he went back to Amazon and reorganized. And as they were talking about him, it was leaked. He, 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 Be Bezos basically said, "This kid can't, you know, like look at him, look at his presentation." Well, oh, you know, we got. It was all about like discrediting the guy. So, yeah. I do think with the internet age, the way things are now, I think. You could leverage some of those technologies to to work to the benefit of, of, of workers, mm. um, especially with the side hustle economy that's happening, you know, like with Uber and all the rest of it. Like now more than ever, we have alternate sources of income yeah. on a temporary basis that um, could give the workers leverage. But yeah, and you can get the your organization out there too. I gotta tell you, man. Anytime there's any sort of left wing, you know, enterprise, the organization is always the worst. And I don't know if it's because left wing people are usually more right brained, right? They're more artistic. 
but we've been in war rooms on the Republican side, and there's a bunch of strategy that happens, and it, you know, univoc univocal messaging, mm -hmm. all types of craziness. You know, we had, you know, protocols. This is the media. Yeah. Yada, we had yeah. designated media people. Like, we were super, super organized because we wanted to funnel all the information through one source because that guy was the most, you know, articulate defender of our position. So if somebody was going to end up on the news, we want that guy to end up on the news because he's able to, to, to say, you know, what, what we want said. And the point I'm making is that you can organize that way and appoint somebody that speak like for the Amazon guy, like he got it de facto because he was involved yeah. in this crazy lawsuit. But it can be done. I think that's one of the biggest things is our lack of ability to organize, you know, yep. like since the six i'd say the civil rights movement was a decidedly left-wing movement in america at the time yeah i mean if you had now that we have like paypal and all these other things like if if the workers got together and they said okay now stuff is going to change so every business that doesn't give x amount of money we're going to start like systematically boycotting or whatever and people are going to go on strike right and then we all basically you say it could be as simple as saying, okay, everybody that works for McDonald's is going to give X amount to the Burger King workers when they're on strike. And the Burger King workers are going to do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? So then the money is still getting dispersed between us yeah, Jimmy, so we can keep the boat afloat, but make them suffer enough where they say, oh, let's just give Jimmy, them their minimum wage. Jimmy was talking about a general strike, which is everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Which, which would shut down the country in, a, in you know. But it would take about two change. or three days to shut down the country, yep. and it would take us months to get out of it. Um, so right, you know, because if you stop everybody's income for three days, yeah, right, yeah, um, I'd do it. I'd, I'd do that. It's true. Time. There are provocateurs that enter into left wing spaces to sabotage it. But to be honest with you, Riv, a lot a lot of what's happening right now on the left is just plain immaturity and inexperience, like. We, we don't know yet how to how to pull political levers or philosophically justify some of the more politicky things that need to be done in order to win. Um, you can see clearly that progressives progressives are not at the point yet where they're mature enough to be able to handle any any kind of power. As soon as they get some power, it automatically gets abused. So, like, and, and again, I'm not saying that the right wingers don't abuse their their power either. The problem is is that they appease people that vote mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> then on the one hand like you can be mad at bernie but bernie folks did not show up for north carolina for him with the biden situation I mean, biden won north carolina pretty easily so mm -hmm. it's not like bernie not, not like the bernie bros and the bernie mams like did their level best in 2020 to get this man to win mm -hmm. i mean a lot of us stayed home, couldn't afford to even be bothered with voting in the first place. So, like, I don't know, man. This is this, <laughs> this is kind of the situation we're in right now in the country. And it, it look, the dichotomy, and you know, whose side are you on, and all that. Like, it's a horrible situation. I think my mom. I think the healthcare workers or something were striking. I'm not sure. Um. They tried, or, or something like they tried to get my mom to join some union or whatever. But my mom was like, nah, I'm not paying any union dues. My mom wasn't going to join that organization unless she could be the leader. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just... <laughs> it's not, <laughs> um, the other thing I'll say about the song before I read it is, like, the way he was handling it, was it a mandolin and a violin there that they were playing? There was a big, long one. It was, I, I don't know. I wish uh, our chair was here. He'd be able to tell me immediately. But, like... That style, the way they're using it, Riv Rivo, help me out. That that's a uh, that's distinctly American, right? Like we came up with that, like on you know on the homestead, like you just sitting around the campfire, you know, the harmonica like, like at the range, like, like at the range in that yeah, show, like Yellowstone, like after a hard day of work, we're all just sitting there. I'm strumming my guitar, you know, yeah. whatever, whatever, and then somebody else is playing violin and shit, like I hate I. I it just makes me very proud as an American. Like, yeah, we created that kind of music. That was awesome. Hmm? Yeah. 
It's like very distinctly American. And like to use a violin and uh, I don't know if it's a cello or something. River says mandolin and violin. Ah, oh, I'm a restaurant with mandolins and violins. We just sitting here trying to win, trying not to sin. High off weed and lots of gin. So much smoke need oxygen. Sadly count them Benjamins. Nigga, you should too if you knew what this game would do to you. Been in this shit since 92. Look at all the bullshit I've been through. So-called beef with you know who? I'm not going to say the next line. All right. Um... Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It was just a really cool, awesome sound. Uh, those dudes are mega talented. Uh, my favorite song of night so far is a 9.2. Uh, I would give this one a 9 even. All right. And on the other side of the break... Emily, we reacted to that one. Find out, out. Find out. On the other side of the break, uh, Emily asked a question. Uh, since you're wearing the Bloody Kisses shirt. Did you like the song Christian Woman? We will tell you that sometime at the other side of this commercial, dear listener. Now you have to stay in order for you to get our opinion. Mm, we got you over a barrel. I'm Ben. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. As Sorry says... 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You have to skip and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes. Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you, so we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> The Alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft, what? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Fire merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child shall lead them to buy our merch. All right. Uh, Vinny will be returning very shortly. I am updating some information on my trial. Uh, whoops, that was supposed to be the 30th. Revo. I'm updating... The the date would have been the 30th because that was the day you paid for that um, for these songs. So I'm changing the dates from May 2nd to, mm. to April 30th. So that will stay, stay uh, according to the facts. All right. Vinny's on his way back now. Somebody got a question? No. No. Nobody had any questions. Why? Is that all right or... Okay. It's not right, but it's so cute. All right, here we go. Did you tell the people? Uh, did you tell Elle, no. Ellie, or Emily? I liked the song, but you should watch the reaction. You should watch the reaction. Forgive okay. her. Utah Phillips. So, forgive her. That's how it started out. Remember? Forgive her. <laughs> forgive her. Forgive All right. Her. Yeah. Yeah, you started doing that in different reviews. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For a while, it's so funny. They'd all get mad at me. Yeah. Utah Phillips is up next with the song Hallelujah, I'm a Bum. <laughs> this is a performance of a song written by either Haywire Mac, Mick Linktock, or possibly by a hobo in Kansas City in 1897. Due to the nature of folk music, the authorship is unclear. Written to humorously mock the moralizing advice given to the hobos of America. 
The main line referenced in one of these lines being the railroad bums would travel down to get from location to location to do work. This was the marching song of the IWW, of which Mick Clintrock was a member. It was adopted by Spokane branch of the IWW and popularized after the free speech fights in the early 1900s. The IWW organized transit workers, especially in the cities in the American West, who worked in highly seasonal jobs. They met on the streets, discussed contemporary issues, and listened to speakers. At the time, it was a very popular method of organization. The events often ended with the police arresting them for participating in street meetings. The most notorious of all of the free speech fights was the San Diego free speech fight, which won a significant amount of public awareness for the IWW as it involved tremendous violence against the labor groups organized by the IWW. This song became popular, oh, particularly popular, as it was often sung during these street meetings. The name of the song is Hallelujah, I'm a Bum, and the band is Utah Phillips. All right, Let's guys. Check it out. Utah Phillips, Hallelujah, I'm a Bum. Excellent. You're a Bum, Rocky. You're a Bum. All right, here we go. Hallelujah, I'm a Bum. Other folks do. How can I get a job when you're holding down to? Hallelujah, I'm a bum. Hallelujah, I'm bum again. Hallelujah, give us a hand out to revive us again. Oh, I went to a house and I knocked on the door. The lady said, Scram bum, you've been here before. Hallelujah, I'm a bum. Hallelujah, bum again. Hallelujah, give us a hand out to revive us again. Yeah, I went to that house and I asked for some bread. The lady said, Scram Bum, the baker is dead. Hallelujah, I'm a bum. Hallelujah, I'm a bum again. Hallelujah, give us a hand out to revive us again. There I am in Spookaloo, city of magic, city of life. Ensconced upon my front porch in broad daylight, long about noon, my rising time. Drinking something of a potable time. beverage, playing my guitar. Long after everybody else in the neighborhood has packed up their lunchbox and gone off down to Kaiser Aluminum to put in their shift. This enrages my neighbors. Uh -oh. <laughs> One in particular across the road, little retired banker fella, been known to cannonball his rotundity across the road and stand there and publicly berate me for my sloth and indolence. <laughs> Why don't you get a job, he says. Some of you heard that, I'll bet. Now me being hit to the Socratic method fires back a question. Why? <laughs> why, he says, taken aback. If you had a job, you could make three, four, five dollars an hour. I said, why, pursuing the same tack. He said, hell, you make three, four, five dollars an hour, you could have a savings account. Save up some of that money. I said, why? He said, well, you save up enough of that money, young fella. Pretty soon you never have to work another day in your life. Said, hell, that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I Fair like enough. my boss. He's a good friend of mine. That's why I'm starving out on the bread line. Hallelujah, I'm a bum. Hallelujah, bum again. Hallelujah, give us a hand out to revive us again. Yeah, and I like Jim Hill. He's a good friend of mine. Say, that's why I'm booming down Jim Hill's main line. Hallelujah, I'm a bum. Hallelujah, bum again. Hallelujah, give us a hand out to revive us again. I guess pretty soon I'll be headed back to Spokane. Take up my task of wintering in, and I do a little uh, light farming or heavy gardening, whichever. <laughs> you know, that kind of... Farming is, is hard if you're in this traveling profession. And of course, when you sing like I do, you got to be ready to travel uh, with considerable alacrity. I got a Greyhound bus ticket in my back pocket all the time. But you see, quite often I'm not back in town in time for my plowing or my planting. That's awful. No. Oh. Now, one time I was sharing a platform in New York City, it was, with a bunch of high powered labor politicos. Uh, 
It was a benefit for the farm workers, that's what it was. I remember Richard Chavez, Cesar's brother, was there. And so was Bella Abzug, former congresswoman from the state of New York. Remember her? Wonderful woman. I mean, she was loud, vociferous, big hat. She was yelling at that audience, righteous beef it was, about how the feds, the FBI, had been opening her mail for ever so long. Well, I knew the feds had been opening my mail for at least 20 years, reading all my personal radical mail, and it never bothered me because I figured them birds had to learn that stuff somewhere, and it might as, <laughs> might as well be from my mail. But then it occurred to me in my predicament, having the FBI open your mail might come in handy. I sent Sheila, my partner, a letter through the United States mail, and I said in it, for God's sake, don't plow up the backyard. That's where the guns are buried. <laughs> National Guard rolled up, dug up the whole backyard in time for me to come back and plant the damn thing. <laughs> Workers of the world, unite! Yes! Shout out to Popo! Shout out to Popo! Oh, I went to a bar and I asked for a drink. He gave me a glass and he showed me the thing. And I knew ya, I'm a bum. Hallelujah, long again. Hallelujah, give us a handout to revive us again. Whenever I get all the money I earn, the boss will be broke and to work he must turn. Hallelujah, <laughs> I'm a boss. Hallelujah, long again. Hallelujah, give us a handout to revive us again. And why don't you save all the money you earn? If I didn't eat, I'd have money to burn. Hallelujah, I'm a boss. Hallelujah, Bob again. Hallelujah, give us a hand out to revive us again. Ah, this was this was uh, part Don Francisco, part George Carlin. I really like that. Like, I don't know how to describe it. I always describe it as like focus on the family guy, <laughs> like. Like, it's yeah. just very, like, wholesome, yeah, very yeah. American, just, yeah. hey, it's an American guy with a wry sense of humor and yep. irony. Uh, I, I thought this was brilliant. He did a really, really good job. And he also put, like, a lot of um, humor. I, I, I wish I had, like, the exact lyrics, because there were some up and down. Well, I've got some of it here. Why don't you work like other folks do? How the hell can I work when there's no work to do? And then the next line is, um, how can we find, how can we find, uh, how can I work when you're, you're doing, yeah, right there. How can I get a job when you're holding down two? So it's like a damned if you do, damned if you mm -hmm. don't situation. Like on the one hand, it's like, oh, don't you get a job? But one job isn't making it so that he could live. So he takes on a second job. And then the criticism is, why are you taking up all the jobs? Yeah, so yeah. the poor person, like he can't win. Like the the deck is stacked against her. Like well, you're 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 not. It's not going to happen. I think the other thing too is we're always looking at it from our side. So, you know, like for me, the idea of like standing on the side of the road with a sign that looks like so much work to me. Mm -hmm. And I would not want to do that type of work. But the person on the side of the road, like we know, you know, a decent amount of people that do that. And, like, for them, they would rather do that than actually, like, have a job that they punch in and out of and have that more, sort of, like, um, that control that your job requires of you. I mean, it, it... That is something that, like, suburban people don't understand about a, a, a big chunk of the homeless population. Yeah. Is but... the... It's a life... It's Sometimes it's an adopted lifestyle. Yeah, it's... It's not a consequence of... Exactly. Of the money situation. Exactly. It's it's a choice that some of them are making, and and I think that obviously, like on the rainy days or the cold days, standing out there or whatever. But the way that they like the, the freedom, that that's the thing. Like they have to go without a lot of things, and like you would see them oftentimes they weren't freshly showered or like when it got the bitter cold, like they were worried about where they were going to be that night or the next day when it was going to be cold. So, so it did have its struggles, obviously. Um, but then there are struggles that they didn't have that other people do. Like they never worried that they were going to lose their job and lose their home. <laughs> you know what I mean? And their next meal was like, mm -hmm. it, they just seemed like there's a different level of stress that they experience that we don't experience. But at the same time, we experience stressful things that they, they don't have any, any parts of. 
So, yeah, sometimes some of them are making a choice, and that's, like, in this story, the guy was like, get a job. He's like, for what? And he's like, well, so you can make money. And he's like, for what? He's like, well, so you can save the money. For what? So then you can retire and you won't have to work. He's like, yo, I'm doing that right now. I wish I could find the YouTube video, but it was like two minutes, and I'm afraid I'll never find it again. But it was this guy talking about how all of this is bullshit and all of us know it's bullshit, but we just keep, we've all made deals to lie to each other mm -hmm. to tell us this because we're all basically trying to distract ourselves from dying. Like that, that was this guy's theory. So he, like in his mind, like all of this shit is, is completely meaning. I mean, it's like, I don't know if it's nihilism or whatever, because he didn't look like a very depressed, I mean, you don't have to necessarily be depressed to be a nihilist, but. But, like, the way that he was talking, it was like, <laughs> damn. But, like, I I just loved the sense of irony in this song. I mean, hallelujah, which means praise to Yahweh, right? I'm a bum. Like, you're not supposed to celebrate uh, your bumminess. But it's one of those things where it's like, you know, he, he was talking about, like, not... Like, how come you never have any money? And he, and he basically said, I'm spending it all on food. Mm -hmm. And I remember, like, when those child tax credits or those stimmy checks showed up, you pull up at the Walmart, you see all these people walking down with flat screen TVs, all types of shit. Mm -hmm. And people were criticizing them. And, like, I get it. But at the same time, it's like, man, people need something to break up the monotony, especially yeah. with, the, with the current climate right now. It's not a worker's climate. Yeah. Um, the housing market's crazy. Like, people are mega stressed out. So it's like, oh, look at these bums. As soon as you give them a credit, this is what they do to get a TV. It's like, yeah, they need something that can help them unwind after the, you know, 12-hour day they had doing yeah. two jobs, two yeah. thankless jobs. Like, I'm, you can't judge those people for that. But, but notice he says, like, give them a handout and revive us again. I was listening to, I think it was Jimmy Dore. Dude was a Marxist, and he was, talk, he was talking about... Andrew Yang. Remember Andrew Yang had that freedom ben dividend thing where he'd give you $1,000 a month every single month mm -hmm. like like they do in Alaska? Mm -hmm. um, Jimmy basically said, yeah, that's just something that the bourgeoisie kind of hands out to the pro proletariat to, to quell the spirit of revolution. It's like, if you're getting $1,000, 1000 bucks a month, it's going to be very hard for you to organize and go up against the government when they're giving you $1,000 a month. So, when it says, give us a handout and revive us again, it's like, do we have social obligations to each other? That's the question. And I, I'm not quite sure if all of us are aligned with that idea. Like, so because of that misalignment, it, it it's going to color how you think about the solution or whatever. Can you say this another way? In other words, this dude, this dude is literally living paycheck to paycheck, mm -hmm. literally eating hand to mouth, spending all, he's got two jobs and then the, the money that he does have gets spent on food, right? So he's, he's at the bare minimum. And what I'm saying is like, do we see, do we feel that we have an inherent obligation to help that guy? Whether it's constitutionally or from a secular humanist perspective or a Christian perspective, are we obligated? Because if we're obligated, then it's no longer a handout, is my point. Mm. It's like you're using this language about handouts as if they're beggars in this horrible situation. When a lot of people have, uh, you know, both both of our you know sons started working. And when they work, they get taxes deducted. I mean, it's, it's 25 cents or whatever, but whatever, the taxes are getting deducted. And there are different ways that you can cents. that you can contribute to society aside from money. Mm -hmm. But because we're in a capitalist environment and a homeless person is signaling this person doesn't have a good relationship with money. And because of that, there are all these assumptions about this person because they're not good with money. See what I'm saying? So like that's so that if we give that person something, we feel like we're doing something super generous for mm -hmm. the for the downtrodden homeless person mm -hmm. because we that tells me we don't feel obligated to like so for example if like our kids were hungry and i got them a slice of pizza no i wouldn't be like oh i'm such a great person i wouldn't make a big broadway production out about that because i'm obligated to care for my son 
So if we were obligated, if we felt obligated to each other, whether it's as Americans, as humans, whatever, then we wouldn't need Bernie yeah. Sanders to fight for Medicare for yeah. all. We wouldn't need we wouldn't need all that. So, so that's what I'm saying. Like that's the issue for me. Yeah. You know, and, and it's like it, it, it's 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 these criticisms of people below the poverty line from people who have always been in the top 1% in the country and in the world and in human history, really. It's like, yeah. they've got all these criticism. It's like when I listen to, like, Pearl, and it's, like, clear that she, she was very yeah. sheltered with her millionaire father and things of that nature, so she doesn't understand how the world actually works. Yeah, and she talks about sexual assault. Yeah, like, when you when you catch... Like, I, I just really? saw an interview a couple, like, days ago. When you catch Pearl by herself without her enabler, she's she's... She just collapses. I saw that. Yeah, I saw that. You know what I'm saying? Like, like she completely collapses when she's out of her, you know, space or yeah, whatever. Yeah, she was saying some pretty crazy stuff about um, Jews, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that crew, like they're 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 starting to get extremely hostile to to Jewish folks. Like that's something to look at for sure. Because those people are hostile as fuck. Uh, what did you give this song? Nine point four. It's a very thought provoking song. Um, and, and a lot of times, like the most humorous person in the room is also the, one of the more deeper thinkers in the room. And so, like when I see all of these contradictions stacked on top of each other, and, and but then I hear the criticisms, like, oh, you, you know, you're, what was it that the guy, uh, the child tax credit or whatever, they stopped it because the moms were going to buy too much weed or whatever. Remember we were talking about that and. and it's like yeah, all these know, judgments that yeah. people have for for the less fortunate. I mean, I didn't hear crazy. that particular one, but yeah, I think that that's true. I think that people have a lot of judgments. And I, I mean, I did. I used to too. Like for instance, I remember thinking, well, what if I give this five dollars to this homeless person and they go and they buy cigarettes with it? Like legit, that was a thought that I had. Now I don't care. I'm like, you know what, I. Jesus hasn't always been my crutch. It, that's not always the thing that I go to when I'm in trouble. There are other things that I've gone to when I was in trouble, and not all of those things have been free. Right. And so I think that when you're looking at a person in a situation and you're making a judgment as to what they should be spending the money on, I don't know, like, are you giving them the money to help them? Then give them the money to help them. And if they do something crazy with it, they do something crazy with it. But, but, to use that, like, I, I, so many people use that as an excuse to not help other people. Like, what if they waste that money on something? So, well, yeah. you have wasted your money on stuff, too. Right. We all have. Right. So, and, and it just, I think it's just an excuse. It's just a way to not, to not participate, to not take part. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it, it's a way to, um, you know, nullify any obligation we have to them so that now anything I give you is coming from my generous hand, not as an act that you're just supposed to do, you know? Yeah. And I like that sort of mindset too. Like there's been times where, um, where we've helped out people and the, if I, if I help somebody, I might make it a little bit awkward. I'm not trying to make it awkward, but I get emotional and I just, I like the moment and whatever. So I'll, I try not to get emotional because I think that it might make people feel uncomfortable. Although people have reacted very well, I think, to it. But anyway, but you're like, you know, like when you, you'll, you'll be like, you deserve this. Like, basically, you're almost like thanking the person for giving you the opportunity to do what you oh. should have been doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, like, you flip the whole thing and it's almost like you're thanking them for giving you that opportunity to... And I like that. I like, you know, because you'll say, oh, no, no, you've earned this. You you deserve this. Mm -hmm. And I like that because it's like, you know what? Yeah, like, why does everybody have to feel like they're groveling to get help? That's what I'm saying. Like, you know, like, I, I, I can go down a rabbit trail with that. But, yeah, like, I, I really resent the term handout relative to talking about how we engage with the poor. Because we don't know how they got into that situation. And a lot of times, it's just dumb luck. You know, we randomly decided, I randomly looked for Deftones. And then that set off a chain reaction to what we're doing now, which gives mm -hmm. us, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and those are the, that's what I'm looking at. 
See what I'm saying? All right, what did you... That's cool, Ian. I'm so glad that, like, something that I said two years ago affected the help that you, you gave that guy. It's a cool feeling when you let it go and you don't mm. worry about what happens to the 5 or 10 or 20 bucks that you passed out. Um, I don't worry about it anymore. I, I used to... You know, to be honest with you, and I'm not suggesting this for... <laughs> For any of the young ladies in the in the chat, but I have I have cash on me, and you know I don't always have cash on me. But if I happen to have it on me, I will give it if somebody asks me for it. I'll just you know. I can vouch for that. Whether or not Vin is with me, I, I still. And our patrons, our our patrons are every month. There's about three or four kids now that we support in Central America. You know, getting them educated. You know, these kids. Once they age out at 12 or 13, if it's a boy, the cartel scoops them up, like, right outside. Mm -hmm. And if it's a girl, the traf the cartel scoop up the girls, too, to be traffickers. It's so, And it's so friggin' reasonable, too. Like, it takes care of their school, their clothes, and their food. And, and, and you're medicine. paying a dollar a day. And, and Literally yeah, $30 their, a medicine. month. Yeah. So well, our patrons, all of us are taking part in that. We've got, like you said, we got four four kids. And so our, um, patrons, our patrons are giving on a regular basis on that thing. And again, like, if you just looked at these things as obligations that we're obligated to one another, then... Yeah, BC. I have no issue with that out. either. Somebody's holding a sign that says, look, I'm not going to lie, I just need a beer. <laughs> like, I I don't know. I, I can respect that because... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean... There I, are some times where people are like, yo, I just want to peace out a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Like, I hate, I hate this, like, this... This mental, this hierarchical mentality of giving and receiving. It's like Jesus asked the woman at the well for water. So like, does that yeah. mean you know? It's like, come on, like, so if we see each other as people that we're obligated to take care of, then we're gonna be fine. But if we if we believe that we're only supposed to take care of ourselves, and so to help another person is nice because you're like really going extra, that's when shit gets dangerous. Mm -hmm. You know. I understand there's there's lots of people who are homeless because they like the lifestyle. Some of it is mental illness, but a lot of it is you came on hard times or whatever, and however you got there, you're stuck. And I still believe that those people deserve the general kind of lifestyle in this country that the rest of us have. Mm -hmm. um, because we've created a, a sort of a floor expectation for standard of living. And so when these people start protesting and saying, I don't want to work two and a half jobs or whatever, they're always characterized as lazy people asking for handouts. But it's like they want their life to be more than just yeah. a, punch a, in, punch a, out. Yeah, a, a tool to generate revenue yeah. for billionaires who yeah. don't know them, don't know their middle name, don't yeah. care when they were born, don't. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm telling you, when we It have... gets flipped around on them and now they're called lazy, they're called this, mm -hmm. they're called that. And then if you give them any, quote, help, now they're taking a hand out. It's just, it's just insane. Like, the attitude is crazy. Like, we I'm don't gonna... love each other as Americans. It's pretty insane. I have, like, fun stuff added in when we eventually get a, um, a warehouse where we'd be selling the formula, like, distributing it from. It would be cool to have, like, a, like a Wheel of Fortune thing. And oh, you can yeah. get a day off. So, like, you come in, and if you, like, you have it so that I way that thing is set a, to only. Win a paid day off. Yeah, you get two, like, two paid days off on a day, or where maybe there's only one, and people can spin it, and, you know, you maybe you sign, you, you scan your badge, and you get one spin a day. And so you never know. This could be the day that you have off, and. Yeah. But the, that's a, a that, paid day off. That's a good point that David just brought up. I'm very thankful my previous occupation didn't result in homelessness. And that I'm able to work and let, you know, he he's military. Mm -hmm. And so, right. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like when you're talking about like handouts and all the rest of it, like you're talking about dudes who, yeah, like endure things that you, you could only dream of. I know. And that's why whenever I see that up there, I'm like, oh, this is Couldn't so readjust. Bad. Now the guy's on the street yeah. after he literally put his life on the line for you. Right. Whether or not his government had that as an intention yeah that's why that guy signed up yeah and he ends up on the street for you know ptsd all the all the usual suspects and now you want to act like you're doing him a favor by giving yeah it's the least you could do for somebody with the cojones to go and literally put their life on the line mm -hmm. and their conscience on the line for this country you have a complicated relationship when i see like a vet in that situation because obviously you did pick the job but at the same time like 
they had that job because they believed that they were going to be X, Y, and Z for America. And, like, the, I feel bad. Like, that person, at the end of the day, we are still, we still do get to experience our freedoms because people put their lives on the line. Mm -hmm. So, when I see the vet out on the side of the road, I'm like, this should never be happening. Like, I, I, that makes me feel like, as Americans, that's a big fucking fail. They, that yeah. should never happen. The only reason that a vet should be out on the, on the road like that is because they've completely gone insanely crazy and they're just waiting for the hospital to pick them up and bring them to give them care, not like, you know, zapping them and different whatever, like, like give them actual, like help these people work through the trauma for free that they've endured. But yeah. Wow. And it's like Dawson saying like they're, they're, they're legit tormented hmm. and when I was in the hospital, there was a lot of ex-military dudes there like just didn't know how to function outside of that situation mm -hmm. and like really big strong dudes that do you know but they they just that everybody processes those things differently and sometimes mm -hmm. those guys end up on the street and it's on us man to like it, it's one of those things where every time i see one of these gofundmes i'm always like yes like people love each other look at that but then i'm like yo Mm -hmm. These are all taxpaying citizens for the most part who are mm -hmm. given to this GoFundMe. So they're they're essentially you realize that like when you go to GoFundMe a person like you're double dipping like because you're already paying taxes as an American. Oh hell yeah! And then PayPal asks you if you'll also pay their fee, so then the money can go straight to the people, which you want to happen. Yeah. But it's like everybody's feeing us. <laughs> We're paying money. Everything. Like everybody's lives are so complicated. When the fact that anybody's even doing a GoFundMe means. That's what I'm Here's saying. It's like, to, it's got to be indicative of some level of, of our government. And like, you can have somebody that faithfully had, you know, social security and other things docked from their paycheck. Then when they're in trouble, people, and, and, and that, and that social security, if you're our age or below, forget it. Don't even think about it. Like mm -hmm. it's not, they're, they're talking about mortgaging social security. What's left of it already. Like, mm -hmm. it's crazy to me that. Like, you can do that, you could pay into the system, you know, pay your taxes, yada, yada, yada. And then when you get hurt or something happens outside of your control, now all of a sudden you're a bum. Now all of a sudden you need a good job. Now all of a sudden you're worthless. Now all of a sudden you don't have any contributions. Like, it's incredible. It's yeah, incredible. that's why, like, when we, and, and I'm not even sure what my policy is would be on it now, but before, whenever I would meet somebody that would be a bum, so to speak, or lived on the street or whatever you, you know, want to characterize them as they uh i always wanted to know what they did before like did you have a job like what was your life like yeah. like you weren't always living on the street so what was your life like before um and it, it's always like a little bit weird asking the question because i i never want to make somebody feel bad like i'm saying okay like you're worthless right now tell me when you were worth something what you were worth that's not my question at all it's like you know like because I, I think they get wrapped up in just being like a street person. And so then maybe sometimes they even seem like they, I felt that they, they lost touch with who they were as well. And that they were almost identifying themselves as a bum or as a street person. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's one of the things that, that's cool too about our religion is it doesn't matter if, if you're on the side of the road or you're stuck in a box somewhere or you're, you know, you're Tom Brady, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like you're all made in the image and likeness of God and all of them have, everybody has value. But when we have that mindset, then we wouldn't treat people the way we do. You know, I was thinking again about that cop pouring the alcohol on the guy, on the, the homeless guy's head because there was nobody there to stop the cop. And, um, yeah, that's just wrong. And it's and it, and it's just wrong that the the homeless guy accepted it and was just glad he didn't get arrested. That's also wrong. It's wrong that that person accepted that sort of disrespect of themselves, like that they were that low, you know, that you would accept that. Yeah, that 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 was a. Uh, that's one of those. I've got like five situations in my life where I'm like, I get tormented because of the fact that I wasn't there. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely one of them. Mm -hmm. So we had we had a crazy yeah. relationship while we were doing that ministry with police. Yeah, and we did. It was yeah, half we did. adversarial, half cooperative. They saw what we were doing down there. And I, I think it was mostly 
cooperative from my from yeah. my angle. Yeah, no, the yeah, they, they were, different. yeah. There were a couple things where you know we they'd some... roll up. The cops would roll up and they'd see us there and they'd be like, "Oh, you guys are here, okay." And then they would leave and they would let us handle situations. We had yeah. one guy. He walked into the road. Uh, he was trying to die, and um, <laughs> we were there. You know, we pulled him inside. We start talking to him. That and, uh, that situation was crazy because like. There's all this commotions happening, and dude's just up there preaching or whatever, and like dude doesn't miss a beat. He just kept he kept the shit going, but there was all this chaos happening. And then right as he was done, he jumps outside. Cops everywhere. The cops basically handed him over to us. They right? did. They did. Well, the guy walked into and like got hit by like a truck. Like I think, I think the truck was going down the road, and he like turned and like walked into it or something because he didn't get like severely injured. But the cops were gonna take him, and they were gonna. He was gonna probably end up spending the night in jail. So we were like, we'll take him with us. And the cop let him go with us. You know, he knew that we were, we'd been doing stuff downtown in the city and stuff. And so you know, I brought him to my place and everybody came over and I got to make menace soup for him. I yeah, we were able to take, guys. we were able to take care of that guy. Yeah, but it was a cool night. We did what we were supposed to do. Yeah. Well, and that was the thing, like That's being it. a part of that, like, yeah, we were doing what we we're supposed to do, but it felt so good to do what was right. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's I'm, I'm always searching for like that one pure act yeah like i've like devoted myself to like by the time the life is over to have like one truly pure act and i'm not even sure if that's like possible at this point mm -hmm. but it's, it's something to attain to but mm -hmm. yeah definitely definitely that, that this one was uh very near to home unfortunately uh mm -hmm. Uh, 9.6. 9.2 for me. 9.2 for me. 2 for me. Did you ever answer that question about uh, typo negative? I liked it. She liked it. Forgive all. Forgive all. That was I just our, said you should go watch that the That was our introduction. That was our introduction to uh, <laughs> the homie, Peter Steele. I was making fun of him. I was like, oh, he's goth kids, blah, blah, blah. Turns out he's fucking 6'6", six, six, all types of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these yeah, he was a comment, beast. Yeah, you know, these people in the comment man. section, I'm like, they're like, Peter Steele would have murdered you, blah, blah, I'm like, oh, shut the fuck up. You know, they're like, ah. I'm like, I'm going to Google this name. Ah! <laughs> he was like 6'6", six, six, he was huge. I was like, holy shit. Huge. <laughs> I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't box, I got my Glock and Vertum. That's it. I'm I was like, going to say, they have weight classes for like, a reason. Excuse, excuse me? Oh, it's it's you. Okay, <laughs> stay right there. I gotta go to my trunk. Shout out to Peter Steele. All right, you guys. We'll be back with some Judy Collins, Brennan Roses. Judy Collins. I will answer the question of what a, a pure act is on the other side of the break, there, listener. Vin out. Sorry. I I'm Ben. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. Is sorry says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be a part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 here and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child shall lead them. We have a special announcement. Soraya has quit 
Then it's soy. She's here no more. You guys will just have to deal with little old Vincente Marzano Mrioso. Speaking of lies. Oh, you've returned. Vinny was lying to you. He'd like to boot me off of this channel. But we can't, because we're in the middle of a stream. And we're in this together now. <laughs> Judy Collins. Are we still on for the stream tomorrow night? We have a stream tomorrow night? We have the stream for the next three nights. We have a stream tomorrow night. It's a duct. All right, here we Judy go. Judy Collins, Bread and Roses. Bread and Revo Roses. Pick. And Revo says... What? Go ahead. An early 20th century slogan for women's suffrage activists was bread for all and roses too, which was a slogan for fair wages and better working conditions. Yeah. James Oppenheim in 1911 wrote a poem using the slogan. In 1912, it was used to define the bread and roses strike in Lawrence, Massachusetts, where they where they protested the worsening working conditions with lower pay that had been happening at the mills there. The strike involved over 51 nationalities as strike crossed gender and racial boundaries. In 1917, Carolyn Colsat wrote music to go with the poem. This song was often sung by female unions or at women's colleges when they formed picket lines. This version is sung by Judy Collins, one of the most successful and prolific folk singers to come out of the 1960s. This version's music is written by Mimi Farina, whom is Joan Boa's younger sister. All right. Well, let's check this out. This is Joan cool. who? Oh, Baez. Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. The name Bread of this and song Roses. Is Bread and Roses. Hmm. Judy Collins, Vin and Soy. Let's go. As we go marching, marching in the beauty. Oh, my. 
Wow. Ooh. That, that woman had a voice so on good. her, huh? That woman had a yeah. voice on her. Wow, that was so beautiful. Wow, I, I loved this because, you know, generally when a lot of times when like the feminist movement is talked about or you speak to people who claim feminism, there's like, a, a, it seems there's a lot of like a deep hatred of men, a lot of, in the background or like right up front. So I really liked the, the positivity of this one, but also like um, when it, when it talked about the mothers the mother the women the no men, the, the men are still the, children the mothers and right mother here them again. as we go marching marching we battle too for men for they are women's children and we mother them again like yeah that circular sort of like we we need you like i i just really like that that, that they were fighting for men as well um yeah i uh I got a shower last night. I thought it was relatively early by my standards. You were asleep. And uh, you always say, why don't you wake me up? But like, I was sitting there watching you. I'm like, yo, I rely on her for so much shit. Like, just emotionally, you know what I'm saying? Like, it would have, like, it's very, very hard to explain. But, <clears throat> you know, th this woman will stay up till literally six seven eight o'clock you know like all types of shit if my insomnia is not doing good so yeah i i always i always like to take these times like you know i think that like i literally like couldn't watch her anymore this pearl whatever her name is and she <laughs> said something about like she made a point to say men don't need women or whatever and like that was the end of my discussion with her. Like, I, I mean, not discussion, just watching her. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't. Like, we are. I, I think it was your uncle or somebody. Like, why can't we just say we need each other? Or was that your? Yeah. Was your, yeah. It was yeah. It was pop, my father. Pop, pop my father. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, why can't we just say we need each yeah. other? Yeah. Like, why? You know. Yeah. Like, why Everybody's does it have afraid to, be, to put out that vulnerability. Why do we have to perpetuate like all this battle of the sexes shit? Yeah. Like, we're not kindergartners anymore. Yeah. But but to your point like this more seems to be the 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 ethic of uh first maybe second wave feminism. Like, oh, 76. Yeah, this is probably second wave. Third wave feminism got ridiculous, like insane, mm -hmm. hostile, you know, woman writing about her sons and her sons are oh, future that's rapists. Oh, third. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she yeah, wrote this song third. about that her. Crazy. Uh, her that was a song? Are, no, I mean, uh, this, worse, it was an article in like Rolling Stone Jeez. about how her, and she's got her first and last name up there and about how her sons are, are basically rapists just I because they're boys. I honestly don't understand that. How then she wrote a follow-up piece. Your, oh my God. She wrote a follow-up piece and she said that their reaction to her doing that to them prove that she was right like look at men they can't take any criticism it's like that's your fucking son you weirdo like she was so caught up in the, her man hate that she Shoot, but did, you, know, wow. you, you know like yeah so so anytime i hear critiques of feminism mm. i it's generally third wave feminism that's gotten completely insane and fourth wave feminism uh, you know unless you guys do something now all that shit's mm. going away yeah <laughs> do what you will with that right but, right 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 yeah but yeah, yeah. I'm get more familiar with the different waves what, what, sonically when i'm listening to this song it's like oh, man you know this is gonna get me in trouble but so beautiful <sighs> okay how am i gonna do i'm gonna have to elegantly kind of handle this but essentially generally speaking there are dispositions that are more closely associated with women than with men and vice versa and a person might say well that's culturally conditioned so one would be men are protectors right so you can okay. say you're not though it's just cultural cultural whatever yeah but then if you ask the next question well why does the culture put that <laughs> obligation onto men to, to 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 take care of to protect and it's because biologically speaking 99 percent of the time you're going to be the strongest individual in that house right so my point is to say you can talk about that obligation from a purely secular humanist standpoint and still get the idea that that's what uh, a man needs to do. 
Yeah, because a man is coming at the the threat is generally another man. So you need to have a man going up against another man yeah. to even equalize it. Yeah. So nobody's walking around saying that a woman should come up against a man that's intruding in a house. Certainly, if there's another man there, throw him away. But but uh, there's lots of women that are saying that they say I don't need a man. We don't need men, and and it's ju- and I the it's always the same type of women too. It's always people that are either not in a good, healthy relationship or not in a relationship at all. I know it's always the one like, and it's usually the like that's just single. You've been and single you're like for four close years. to you're close to forty or something. You know, it's like wait, why would I want to take advice from you? Why this way that you just dismiss all of men and say we don't need them? Yeah, I'm like I said, yeah, but society and laws are structured by men. You can't say there's a patriarchy and then when it comes down to the laws that that are structured in such a way that makes it so you're safe enough to live by yourself or you have laws to be able to give you money because you have kids, like all of those things were set up by the patriarchy. They were allowed by the patriarchy. Yeah. So you the, so we did so you do need men to be able to accomplish those things. Simultaneously, men need women as well. Like I, it's just every I think nobody wants to be vulnerable because maybe it's fear, I don't know. Like I think that maybe I feel safe to say that I need a man because I'm in a relationship that's healthy in that regard. Maybe that's you know, because if I wasn't in a healthy relationship, would I say I need a man? Probably not. I'd be like, you know, we're doing this on our own, I mean, ladies, you know? God, if God thought I was strong enough to do all this shit by myself, he wouldn't have brought you into my life. I mean, yeah, I you think know, we like, definitely like, need each other for like, sure. Yeah, but the Bible almost presents the man as being more in need than the woman because he's the one that needs to help her. It never says that she needs to help her. Mm-hmm. And helper in the Old Testament is a divine term, mm-hmm. right? Like Ebenezer, Ebenezer, like it's 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 usually applied to God when he's rescuing people who are in trouble. Yeah. So right. when God looks at Adam and says, I'm going to make a helper suitable for him, like he's saying that boy's going to be in trouble mm-hmm. by himself. And so like the... This happens a lot in a- African cultures are very... Um, good about the dichotomy and the, the the simultaneous differences between men and women. And African culture is very fascinating okay. with like teasing that out. I love that. And, okay. And because their concept is balance. Yeah. So you, so you need you know the hardness versus the softness, the caring versus the ruthless, and all the rest of those things. Yeah. And so they, it's it's looked upon that way. And like. What our culture has really, truly been missing is the voice of a mother. Yeah. There is no maternal voice in this culture. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the young guys have found Jordan Peterson, and he's essentially been the, feel how you want to feel about JP. But what's happening is JP is addressing a father wound. Yeah. For sure. And I do think also we have a mother wound in this country. I agree. And I don't think we're going to recover until we all we reconcile ourselves to that. Yep. Um, yeah. And 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 you know like th- this is this was very important. Like most of the time, especially in the New Testament, the 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 people of God uh, or the New World or whatever you want to call it is characterized as a woman. Right. Right. You know, the Jerusalem below is in slavery with her children, but the Jerusalem above is free, and she, she is, is our mother. On Subhanallah. Yeah. So, my my point is, my point is that, and that's one of the reasons why I see so much value in feminism. And and sure, you know, the third wave stuff is crazy in my view. The fourth wave stuff is crazy, but this is what I wanted to put out: when women protest, it's different than when men protest. Yeah. And I, you know, I shot a video about this a couple of weeks ago. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, you know, but like when women are protesting, there's there's crying, but there's no like, we're going to get violent and fuck yeah. shit up and kill you. Your life yeah. is in danger. You know, mm-hmm. when when dudes protest and they're really exercised, yeah, like it's, it's nerve like, wracking. Yeah, I always feel like, wait, ladies, I don't know. I feel like that that wasn't the best plan. I feel like that you didn't help yourselves. You helped somebody else. You know, like when they do the naked protests, it's like, 
Uh, I just don't think that that's working like you think it is. I feel like that the guys are like, yeah, you should protest more. Yeah. Like, I don't feel like that that, like, protects us more, actually. I feel like that those naked protests probably make more assaults happen for girls in the vicinity. I just, I think that it's a horrible, terrible plan. I think that, you know, they're trying, but that's, like, that's the kind of protest that women do. Or then they were walking around with those crazy hats. Like... I mean, that's just, it's embarrassing. But, like, that, those are the things that, or, like, that guy that brought up the the women, like, attacking those men. And then it turned out that the women, they attacked paintings at, like, 4 a.m. Yeah, at this the early place. Like, yeah, so nobody was going to get hurt, yeah. you know? Like, that's what women do. We are fr- we get frustrated, we get angry, and, and, you know, like, women try to fight back in the way that we know how. And a, a lot of times, you know, it involves our sexuality, because maybe that's... Kind of what we feel is our strength. <laughs> Ian know. says men love the idiot naked feminists. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, I, that's, come on, lady. I, I agree. I think that we need a leader that's going to say, wait. But not just to lead the women, but to also lead the men as well. Like, that's my point. Like, yeah, maybe it needs to be like we a. Don't, we a don't have that. That's we don't have that. We don't have that kind of energy. I mm-hmm. think it's important. I, th- yeah. I, I really, and, and you know, like. The, the, the female voice is, is being more and more and more marginalized. Well, I think a lot... Of in a ta- lot of contexts. I ahead. think a lot of thing that happens, too, is a lot of the voices that are out there are a lot of times, no offense, they're single women or pe- women that are not in healthy relationships. And as I've said before, you have to... All of my friends... Every single one of them that is not in a healthy relationship has to have a certain level of hardness because she has to engage with a world that's trying to take from her in lots of different ways and she doesn't have a protector out there to be like, yo. So she does have to get a certain level of hardness and they, you know, a lot of my friends will brag about it like, you know, hey, I've gotten this done and I and I, and I respect them for making that, that shit happen but, but it does it does bring you towards, so if we're talking about balance and femininity versus ma- versus masculinity, it pulls you from the femininity and it makes you have to be more masculine because you have to engage saw, in a world at a certain level of hardness. Time, saw it all the time in New York City. Yeah. And and that was, it was a really horrible catch-22 because if you didn't, not just project, but internally invest yourself in, in that kind of... Mm-hmm. It's it's very it's very difficult. If they don't do that, they get eaten alive. Yeah, right. So, so exactly. It's, it's a, it's but, a really so you have to do it, situation. but at the same time, it, it hardens you. So I'm like, wait, I want to hear from the women that ha- that are not hardened, like that that are more on the feminine side. Yeah, yeah. Let me M- hear from them. MJ, MJ, <laughs> you guys are taking names. The female voices that are elevated have male tendencies. It's true. Exactly. They do. That's what I'm they saying. Do. And they, that's why I said they've been I, moved I sh- away from I their shot, femininity. I shot a video like when a million women got together and protested. Nobody died. Yep. No blood was shed. Yep. You know, it was just a lot of estrogen and and hats. And I'm I'm okay with that. My point is, I'm glad. I'm glad that there is there's another energy in the country that says mm. this is bad. This is unacceptable. Yeah. We're going to speak out against it, but nobody's going to fucking die. Mm -hmm. And if we had strong maternal voices during the George Floyd uprising, maybe we would have had a, we would have had a lot less burned down buildings and all the rest of it. Because when you're in the heat of that passion, you got, if there is a voice, because this just happened to me all the time. I used to go absolutely insane. I didn't have my dad there, but I used to go absolutely insane. One time I went after my older brother and, um, she could tell I was in not in a very rational state because my brother yeah. always kicked the shit out of me. And I was blacking out. I was just blacking out. And my mom said, Vincent, Vincent. Mm-hmm. And like, it was like getting like called back into the world or something like yeah. that. And it, st- it stopped me in my track, mm-hmm. but it immediately calmed me down. Mm-hmm. Like if, if you broaden that out at the macro level, we don't have this right now. And, yeah. and if you look at the way this woman talks, our lives shall not be sweetened from birth until life closes, hearts starve as well as bodies, give us bread, give us roses. She, she, she is speaking as a leader. Mm-hmm. She's making demands, but she's not saying, or I'm going to destroy you. Yeah. Because that's how, that's how men operate. 
So, like, another police shooting happens. Farrakhan does a, a speaking tour called Justice or Else. Yeah. It's a very masculine right. sort yeah. of, hey. Yeah. When the, when the women are protesting, nobody's getting harmed. And it seems to me that they're able to be heard more um, because they bring that kind of energy to the... Mm -hmm. So, like, if we had both of those combined in this yeah. country, a maternal, a strong maternal voice... And a strong, you know, yeah. pat paternal voice. Yeah. A lot of things would change for us. I agree. A lot of things, a lot of things would change for us. And now we've got this crazy manosphere telling people that that uh, they don't need women. Mm -hmm. Women are just add-ons. We should be able to cheat on them. We should be able to lie. It's, crazy. it's just crazy. I mean, you know, like this manosphere shit is getting yeah. insanely, insanely out of hand, and it. Right, and it's driving it's driving the genders away from each other because you know it's emboldening the men to be like, yeah, we should be able to do all this shit, and then you know the women either are going along with it, or they're like externally saying that they're that they disagree, or they internally disagree, but they externally put out something else, which just creates more walls between men and women. You yeah. know, as the thing progresses, she says. As we go marching, marching, unnumbered women dead, go crying through our singing, their ancient call for bread. That was so beautiful, the way she said that, like, because it was like that. It was like this steady, like, we're not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like, we're gonna keep marching, and, and there is a cost. There has been a cost. There's been unnumbered women that have died. So there was violence being done, but it wasn't them enacting the violence, but violence that was being done to them. Mm -hmm. And then she says, we're crying through our singing. So it's like, there was this song that was still, which obviously is probably the song that they're singing. Like it's that song within the song. And they're just singing that, but then it's their ancient call for bread. Like, cause this is this, that's the call from all women everywhere is that you have bread to feed your family. Mm -hmm. Just, it was, it was, it was moving. This song was really moving. Yeah, I love the connection between women throughout all time, mm -hmm. throughout all time and space. Yeah. Um, I just think it's a real crazy, difficult, scary time to be. Even the Roe v. Wade stuff, and everybody knows where I am with the Roe v. Wade stuff, but that doesn't mean that I can't put myself into the mind of an 18-year-old girl. He's in a crazy economy who randomly made a mistake because she had this idea that she didn't want to go to college a virgin so now she's pregnant yeah like i yeah. understand i i can i can appreciate let me say it that way i can appreciate that that girl is absolutely fucking terrified and the the, yeah. the overarching message um from the society from the mothers of the society is to demother yourself to to solve this problem yeah shit so, so we're, we're oh not God. getting matriarchal voices. No. I don't have a oh, problem. Geez. You can have a, a clipped-haired, blue-haired, armpits coming out to whatever. You can have voices like that. Those those permeate our culture. Uh -huh. but could we have one voice yeah. that's saying, we're in a lot of trouble if the yeah. women in this society do not understand what their role is yep. and how important and how bad shit gets fucked up when we don't have that feminine mm, energy around yeah 100 percent. like it, it, if 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 we 100 percent. you know and, and so now it's like people are like we're, we're we're like supposed to be at each other's throat with this men and women shit and we're supposed to you know of course the manosphere stuff it's like you modern women you this you that but i don't know man like women have been carrying some some shit for a very very long time like globally mm -hmm. you know in the world and so the other thing that's really fascinating to me about America, and like I said, like, I don't think people realize how insane it is that the citizenry can organize, go on the street and criticize the government and nobody dies. Mm. Like, people, like, what they're doing to Julian Assange is the norm. This is what they do. Mm -hmm. Like, we have, we, we don't realize, like, how oppressive you know people throw around fascists and all that and it's like you've never been outside of america <laughs> you see what i'm saying and so there's a sense in which i gotta say yeah okay mm -hmm. but like i've seen women like across the world 
And a lot of the times, they're carrying a lot of shit emotionally yeah. that they shouldn't have to carry. And then on top of that, I mean, they're just a really bad circuit. I, I, I don't want to... It's sad, like, the circumstances that these women found themselves in. But there, there was a... Yeah, definitely a hardness, but it wasn't a voluntary hardness. No. Like, it was one of those things where, like, she was captured by some horrible spell or something like that, and you're trying to, yeah. you know, whatever. So, a lot of this shit is, is really, really, really out of whack Yeah. for us. And, and I understand, like, in our efforts to include people, we're actually excluding people. And in our efforts to bring people together, it's actually creating so many divides. Yeah. And voices like this that are obviously feminine, but very assertive. Mm, there's she a real strength. You know, this about song it. was not about hope. Right. She didn't say I hope. Yeah. She said, look, these are this is what we want. This is what we're gonna have. Yeah. And until we die, right? I'm gonna keep fucking shit up for you, right, right. rhetorically, until you get us what we need. Yeah, um, that's powerful. Yeah. You know, it's like the Proverbs 31 woman, where she's called a woman of valor. That's mm. a that's a term for warriors. Yeah, and it, it's so practical too, because that message can still be used now. Mm -hmm. Like when you when you're a woman and you deal with assault, or your friends have been assaulted, or you keep hearing stuff like. Sometimes it's like, yo, how long is this going to be able to go on where you see that your per your person that you love is completely changed now because that happened to them? And then somebody gets to go off on their life, like maybe a couple months in jail, probably nothing at all. Like, and it's, it's so frustrating. It's so maddening and like people assaulting women and then still being in the room and laughing, mocking them. It's just... Oh my God, like these, the levels of frustration and what women we have had to deal with. But then you hear songs like this and it's like, okay, this is another one of those situations. Like there's going to be a lot of bodies. There's going to be a lot of women that have been assaulted over the years. And we're going to, we're going to keep marching. We're going to keep marching and we're going to cry through our singing because a lot of us do. Um, but there's, there's an ancient call. And I think that that ancient call is, Hey, we were made in the image and likeness of God too. You can't treat us like this. Um, yeah. And and like getting to that point, and eventually it's gonna break through. Just like, you know, just like this. They got their bread, you know. And their we, roses. Mm -hmm. She wants roses too. She's still a lady. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, yeah. It, it it actually made me think about bread and wine because I heard a sermon one time about bread and wine and basically said bread is the most basic food group mm -hmm. right so like that's like for the poorest of the poor basic sustenance mm -hmm. and then wine is like royalty the blah 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 it's rich <laughs> and so you have you have both elements you, you have, have both so elements much in the elements juice that you can put enough to spare to ferment so if you have a lot you're yeah. very rich yeah so it's like yeah exactly right so right there it shows you exactly what we've been talking about right so anyway yep. really 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 interesting song what do you give it that's a 10 it's an 11 it's an 11 yeah I just, it's just so meaningful yeah it's one of the things i appreciate it's so meaningful, about and tonight. i'm so glad that i heard like i feel like every girl should know this song i'm actually gonna let uh, our girls listen to this probably this week when I hang out with them. But I loved it this. because you know there was no hatred or hostility of men, even That's though even though the people that were that they're fighting against were almost all exclusively male, uh -huh. right? Big bankers and all the rest of it, politicians and shit. But like, it's a very I appreciate people from marginalized groups who can humanize their mm. their opposition. Mm -hmm. Yep. I really, really appreciate that because it's, yep. it's just something that right now, algorithmically, it's, Yuzu wants you to say the most inflammatory shit possible. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, yeah, but that's not how, like, I agree with you with that African stuff. Like, you got to have balance to it. And so, 
Yeah, we're out of whack if, right now. We're completely out of whack. We're completely misaligned. You know, there's been a lot of misogyny. You don't, you can't get assault on mass scale and the, the treatment that's happened to women without there being a lot of misogyny. And obvious, the obvious response to that is, what do you say? Is it misandry? Which, what's it? Misandry, when you're, yeah. You know, when you're just, women are going to hate men then. And so sure. like, there's this constant. And then, then you have like the scripture that says that husbands should love their wives like Christ loved the church. But then women are supposed to respect their husbands. So like, it's again, it's like one of these, it's like a problem. It's like, okay, well, who's going to start first? Because yeah. I could always say, well, you're not loving me like Christ loved the church. I mean, he freaking gave his life for her. So I mean, it's never going to be enough. You know what I mean? Like you could literally always use that. Yeah, most or of these, mo most you could these say women were to me, married, right? Like most of these women were, you know, early suffragettes and a lot of these girls were oh, married, I would think they so, were married yeah. themselves. So it's like, yeah. you know, what were their husbands thinking? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. She's incredible. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, but Pearl Pearl just jumped on there and said, what good did allowing women to vote do for us? Like, she literally has that on her Twitter right now. Like, like allowing women to vote was a bad idea, she said. All right, all right. 9.7, dear listener, would you give it? Uh, I give it an 11. We shall return! Wow. Very, very soon. We'll Vin be back. Out. Sorry out. Go. I'm Vin. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. As Sorry says, 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be a part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buyer merch. It's probably this one. Okay. <laughs> buy our merch indeed. Buy our merch indeed. Child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. All right. Yeah, that's the one. Look. Right yep. Boop. Good job. Okay, so Good job. Revo has picked the next song coming up, and he says in their early 1980s Revo! in South Korea, folk artists began recording their music on cassettes and distributing them themselves as their music was outlawed. Kim Ming Ji, you reacted to his Morning Dew, A Child Becoming a Flower, was working on a project with a group of folk singers. The dictatorship's targeting of him. Uh, had him to where he couldn't finish the project, but the group of 23 singers continued on, forming the group People Who Are Finding Songs. Hmm. <laughs> they subsequently became popular in the democracy and labor protests that brought democracy to South Korea in 1987. This is from their second album released in 1989 as the country's move towards democracy had them easing censorship. It sold 800,000 copies, which makes it one of the most popular Korean folk albums. This song is about the harsh work conditions at sewing factories. Back in 1970, John Tae Il worked at a sewing factory where he witnessed co-workers coughing up blood due to tuberculosis, due to poor, ooh, poor ventilation and factory bosses forcing workers to take in uh, amphibians. What is this? Amphetamines? Amphetamines. 
uh, when, when they, were tired. they were tired. He learned, uh, wow, of labor laws that existed but were being ignored by the dictatorship in the name of rapid economic growth to which he began forming protest groups. The dictatorship derided him as a socialist agitator, in at the age of 22, he set himself on fire, which killed him due to the hospital refusing to care for him since his mother didn't have the money to pay for the medical expenses. What in the world? The song itself mirrors the dictatorship's work, healthy popular songs initiative, and might even pass for one, but the song being in C minor and the lyrics makes the song feel uneasy or creepy rather than inspiring. Some interpret the lyrics about red flowers to represent bruises and yellow flower to represent pus. Some also interpret the album cover with certain people whited out to represent those who had been lost. This song was a major hit in South Korea, even though it wasn't featured on television. You mean give me those lyrics? Yeah. Wow, Holy smokes. Crazy. They killed him? Oh, no, he set himself he on fire. Set himself and the on hospital, fire. And the hospital just sat there and let him die because he didn't have insurance? Boy, what guy's going to judge us all, boy? All right, here we go. You send those lyrics to me? Okay. Yep, it's on the way. Yeah. Uh, what What's the name of the song? Seasons for people who like seasons or something like that? What was it called? Go. It's right there on Trello. <laughs> okay. Subhanallah. Well, I was trying to get the other thing, babe. Oh, goodness gracious, you're killing me. Just tell us the name of the thing. Song Seeking People, Four Seasons. All right, here we go. Go! spooky it was it because was it kind of yeah hear. had a circusy sort of sound to it yeah but it was like off like off like balance this is, <laughs> yeah don't go on these rides kids somebody didn't put something together right to yeah it, to it yeah it was a little bit weird and then the song itself like maybe if that's what the red and yellow was about the bruises and the pus that was kind of gross um but it it kind of seemed like they just went through different seasons and basically like I thought the part that was kind of eerie was at the end when it was talking about, like, right there. Snow covering the earth and thickening all around. Pale faces under white lights of white factories. Until our blooming youth wanes and withers off. The spinning sewing machine keeps a running. So, like, at first, it talks about 
like the sewing machines running and it, it kind of makes it sound like the seasons and then it set, talks about short sh shirts tiny skirts everywhere in hot summer salty sweats beady sweats running and shedding but the sewing machines keep going and it kind of goes through it kind of looks like somebody's like aging in this same factory like mm. there's the hot summers and that sort but by the end like all their youth is gone and and it's because of the factory so I worked at a warehouse, Walmart, for for about a year. Yeah. Boy, that, that was uh, that was soul crushing work, man. Yeah, and you, I mean, it's like you didn't come from like a series of like really horribly bored places, like you know what I mean? No. You, you could say like this was like a hiatus, but you you couldn't even experience it. it was just really that boring like soul crushing yeah it was, and you weren't even there that long yeah and it was like you were man you, it was clearly like a number and you yeah. had to get all the stuff done in an efficient quick time and not make mistakes and blah 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 which you know that's a standard standard for i i was i i was playing around with something about you know the old testament this egyptian dude was gathering sticks i think he was an egyptian mm. he was gathering sticks on the sabbath and they stoned him to death. They killed mm. him. And th that passage is one of the most widely quoted passages. The God of the Old Testament is crazy, blah, 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 right. blah. Right, he stones, yeah, he had somebody killed for just picking up sticks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. This channel actually influenced my understanding of that of that passage. Mm -hmm. um, because of the call-outs relative to capitalism mm -hmm. that happened almost immediately once we started the channel. I thought to myself, like... Yep. What what could possibly what benefit to society would stoning a Sabbath breaker actually make, right? So, um, so it it was very very interesting to me because I was I was is it Exodus sixteen when it happened in, in in Exodus. I want to find the passage because there's another thing too that that was very interesting to me. Um, let me see here. All right, we're gonna put up a couple things on the screen for you guys to look at. Yeah. Right? Is that what you're doing? Yeah, I'll I'll tell you I'll tell you in a second. But yeah, um, so so think this through with me, because even your everybody that worked for you, every everybody that um, you know was part of your household had to observe the Sabbath, mm -hmm. which means yeah. no work yeah. at all. Like you had to prepare the day before so that way you weren't preparing food the day of. Like, nothing. Mm -hmm. You're not going to gather sticks for a fire. Like, literally, it is a day off. Nothing. You're, you're not working. Yeah. And, and Unless you're just enjoying God and enjoying each other. It's true. And Jesus said Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So then, like, why such an extreme reaction? Yeah. And then I thought to myself... When you look at the Old Testament, God is constantly talking about the Sabbath and taking rest and things like that, mm -hmm. as well as in that whole constellation of ideas, there was also, you need to be generous, blah, 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 and there's an obvious co connection. I'm not working. I'm not generating revenue for myself. Now, on top of that, you want me to give to this guy, mm -hmm. and God's saying, yeah, mm -hmm. and I know I'll take care of you. Just do it. And this guy says, nah, I'm, I'm good. But here's the thing. If that Sabbath breaker was allowed to do that, if I'm a guy, and remember, we didn't have employer-employee <laughs> relationships. We had slave and master relationships. Mm -hmm. Okay, there, there was no like, oh, I have a job in the Old Testament economy. If you were working, if you, you, you were working for yourself, and if you weren't working for yourself, then you were a slave. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. Now, people are hearing, oh, we're taking people from, no. No, what we're talking about for the most part is debt slavery, right? And and that's why I said like people are like oh how, what what's the right price to sell your daughter into slavery? I'm like I don't know. Did you tell your daughter to get a student loan? Because biblically speaking, the borrower is a slave to the lender. Since we want to literalize the term slave, mm -hmm. so I guess that means biblically you're selling your child into slavery. Ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Although although because America does not have because there used to be a statute of limitations for a debt like. If I owed twenty thousand dollars left of my balance by the time I got to year seven, all of that would be canceled in the Old yeah, Testament economy. Right. So it my, kept everybody honest. So it, you you would see why 
that Sabbath law is important because if it, uh, you if you were getting a, a slave or an employee or whatever, that guy was selling himself in the market because he was in debt. Mm -hmm. So this dude is completely and totally vulnerable, has no rights, and he owes you money or or you're you're paying off his debt so he has to work to, to compensate for that. He's completely at your mercy, and God says that guy cannot work, mm -hmm. and that's important mm -hmm. because. You have to have labor laws in structure because people are going to take it and abuse it. Look what happened. Look what happened with capitalism. How many millions of people has capitalism killed? Mm -hmm. So on the one hand, it's like, oh, why would you do something so trivial? It's like, yeah. And what's that going to lead to? The other guy sees it and then he tells his slave, hey, get out there. And pretty soon, I mean, those slaves, those they, slaves are going to be working 24-7. They had labor camps. They literally worked Correct. people to death. Correct. They did. They did. I mean, that's what that's what if he, it goes unrestricted, people that is the that is where they'll go to. Yeah. So so I I understand like it looks unmerciful, but on the other hand, it's like if we could have found, you know, Rockefeller or or any of these like big bank giant people that have like completely destroyed the world, mm -hmm. like if you talk to any of those people, they will tell you the the supposed work ethic, the supposed Protestant work ethic, which. I agree, it's one hundred percent true. But on the other hand, these people have people working for them, and they're not humanizing those mm -hmm. people. And if you left, if you left the law to only be um, uh, about that, if you if you just said if you just said, look, uh, we're canceling debts after seven years, um, you can borrow and you should give, but nobody can work on Saturday. You have to have a mandated day off. And what that does is it protects your workers. Mm -hmm. uh, God was not worried about the sticks. He was worried about the ramifications of what's going to happen. In our society, we had to we had to basically mandate. There's strict laws, especially state to state, mm -hmm. about you know how much work you can do, how much notice yeah. you need to give your employer, your employees, all the rest of it. Like you can't just... But if we could, because I've been in those back meetings with those bean counters, if they could, they would work those people to death. Mm. Like, if yep. they could. Um, but yep. our every government in the Western world has essentially had to impose the Sabbath onto these capitalists so as to not make that happen. Mm -hmm. So I think it has a lot of real-world ramifications. And I think that, you know, if, if you... The Israelites even with all that, still couldn't maintain justice toward their employees. And so God said, okay, I'm just going to destroy your nation. You can't treat these people, you can't treat these people with respect. I'm just going to destroy your nation. So um, I see a lot of wisdom in that because mm -hmm. it protected all those workers from having to do a seven-day yeah. seven work you week. You know, it, it also protects the, the owner from going overboard because if you're lending the money but you know, like, remember when the banks did that thing where they, like, calculated that people weren't going to be able to pay it back and then they were going to default on their loans and then they were going to get a bunch of foreclosed properties? Yeah. It forces the bank that you can't do that because when they default on it, you don't, the bank doesn't get it back. They get to keep it. Right. So you can't put somebody in more debt than you think that they're able to pay back over the next seven years. Right. So it keeps everybody more honest. Yeah. Yeah. And... and you know, like I said, it, it, the cruelty, you know, it came out last year. Amazon workers were going to bathroom on the floor, um, you know, because they were in the pick, but they had to go to the bathroom. I mean, just crazy horror stories where you can't, like, lyrically, I couldn't tell the difference between the people and the machines as far as, like, the treatment mm -hmm. and the ideal, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, you treat yeah, people, exactly. you're treating people like they're machines. Yeah, And that's exactly. why, like, this whole AI thing and robot learning and all that stuff, and people, like, they never need insurance, you know, mm -hmm. they never need a break. Yep. They, I mean, you, you could essentially have this AI thing literally working 24-7 for you, uh, doing the work of 50 people. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's just... It's, it's a real precarious situation. And well, I, I think people are scared because they're like, wait, our livelihood could be gone. Like, we might not be able to. But it's like, wait, maybe then we need to revamp society in such a way that people have, like, your Correct. basic living. Correct. And so if Correct. AI takes over, like, you're still, like, maybe all of us 
can live better. Like that song that we were listening to before when it was talking about like ba- basically society is only going to get as good as you how you treat your women. Yeah. Like I think that is true like you know, you can't how the how you treat your workers or how you treat the people that are the lowest in your society if you don't raise those people up, like as a society, you're not going to go up. You can only go so high. We got to raise. Everybody's got to go up. Mm-hmm. So, you know, could we structure society in such a way where people worked less because AI was working for us, but right. you still have the same lifestyle, you know? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a post millennialist, which means that eventually um, Christianity is going to be the, the uh, philosophy religion and law of choice for the for the planet with mm-hmm. few exceptions mm-hmm. so i believe it, it, the world is going to be christianized and you know we've called we've titled that the golden age or whatever mm-hmm. but one yeah. of the one of the things that that that's really that to me is a sign of the golden age and it is is work is how work is perceived yeah if you exactly. look at if you look at ecclesiastes it's toil toil chasing after the wind it's futile it's it's nihilistic mm-hmm. there's a completely very dark book it's called ecclesiastes go check it out and when they specifically talk about work it's like basically hey man you need to eat so mm-hmm. just do your best yeah. right yeah. whereas in the new world it's like no you need to eat so what are you passionate about so it's it's only a few people i love music i would list i yeah i listen to metal for probably three or four hours a night mm-hmm. It's what I would be doing anyway. I'd be talking philosophy anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, you know what I'm saying? Right, or, or, right. or like interacting with you guys anyway. But we get to do what we're passionate. I get to do what I'm passionate about. You know, and I've got friends that, you know, have dreams and they were able to do what they're passionate about. Yeah. What if everybody mm-hmm. was just as happy at their job as Steph Curry is on a basketball court? Is it work? Yeah. yeah. Does Steph Curry work hard? Yeah. Those guys are working really hard yeah. right now. But the point is they love their work mm. because it's something they're passionate about. And like yeah. we're not even close to there yet of like constructing the infrastructure of a society so that everybody's primary passion can be sufficiently monetized. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's the thing. If we could let AI take over for some of these base jobs, then it might open up opportunities for people to... I mean, Zen was at a, a call center, for God's sake. You know what I mean? And then he was able to break into the, his musical career and take off in that. 100%. So it's like, how many people are stuck in a call center? Or they're stuck at a Burger King or some fast food joint. And they're like, I would kill to be able to do something that I love. But yeah. I'm stuck doing this. Well, maybe if we could let the computers take over making burgers. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, like maybe that would open it up to, and, I don't and, know. And, and it, it'll create, you know, the, yeah. the, the, the brain power to, to get the shit done. You know, yeah. the, you know, I think the metaverse thing for, for Zuck didn't work out for him. And I'm glad because like if the, the metaverse w- will be huge, I think once it really starts to take, I mean... People are already selling real estate in in the metaverse. It's ridiculous. It's insane. But that that's my point, man. Like my point is like we can figure this shit out. And to your point, yeah. Like if we offload some stuff to AI so that we've got the brain power to come together to create a economy where everybody's passion is monetized. And so you're gonna get hard workers. Mm-hmm. But you're going to get workers who believe in what they're doing, and you're going to get workers who are passionate about what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I yeah. think it would be a great problem when we have to, you know, reopen up discussions about Sabbath because everybody is so yeah. in love with their work that we would have to yeah. force them to take yeah. a break. Like, that would be a great situation. Yeah. Where we're at right now is, is fascinating. Like, where we're at now is the opposite. God killed a dude for working too much. But in America, we die because we work too much. Mm. And so, stone yeah. the hell out of that Sabbath breaker. I'm good with that. Yeah, like, I, I agree. I see, I, the long, I see the long-term wisdom. Once I heard wisdom. that, I said, oh, yeah, yeah 100%. I see, the, I see the long-term wisdom there. Like, <laughs> Maybe the guy really got stoned, or maybe it's a story that started the whole thing. I don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, But it, but whatever it is, the, the story is there to, to take some wisdom from it. Yep. You know? Yep. 9.1. Yeah. I'll, I'm, I'm going to go with a 9. 
These, these are these are very very thought provoking songs. Like lyrically, wait, there's wait, so wait, much. There's wait. so so many ways I could go with these songs, bro. Uh, there's no, a four no, no, one. no. I'm so sorry. <laughs> this is a this one's an eight. Okay, I gave this one a nine dot one. So eight. I didn't change my thing. I was paying attention. So sorry. Uh, there's a reason the labor movement pushed for an eight hour uh, work day and a five days a week and a weekend, et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they had to push for that. And if the capitalists had their way, they wouldn't have got that. Nor would they have gotten any child labor laws p pushed through. Those are all yeah. Marxist, quasi Marxist movements. Sorry, guys, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> feel how you want to feel about it. We are coming back. We'll be right back. On the most dudes I know work their side gigs on Sunday. Yeah, because we, we've constructed an economy that now necessitates the gig economy. See, this is the thing that gets me. It's like, you know, we had the whole latchkey kid situation in the 80s and 90s. Yeah. And it's like, oh, okay. So now, yeah, inflation wise and other things, like we're, we, we have a society built on two incomes. Now, what do you have? Now, because you have these side hustles with Uber and all that, now people have two and a half. So you're literally working all day. Like, it's insane. It's absolutely insane. But what are they supposed to do? They need the extra scratch. I, I get it. Like, yeah, it's, it's yep. fucking crazy, man. It's, it's absolutely crazy. All right, guys. Uh, that, that was a good insight, uh, MJ. I had, I, had to, I had to talk about that. Such a good point. We will be back on the other side of the break. There's this fellow by the name of Bruce Springsteen and another fellow by the name of Tom Morello. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. The Ballad of the Ghost of Tom Jode is up next. That sounds like a familiar title. Yeah, we will it check does. it out now. I'm Ben. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listen up, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. It sorry says, 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, I have. They were badass. Ian, I, th I thought I responded to you already. Yes. Ian has a whole set of uh, guitar solos that oh, I will let him... Boy. I will let him give to you, uh, release to you at his own recognizance. All right. Bruce Springsteen featuring Tom Mor Morello. Have we done this before? The Ballad of the Ghost of Tom Joad. I thought we did. Joad. Joad. Isn't that the dude from... Uh, I thought this was the one with the... That's from... Uh, the violin. Grapes of Wrath. Uh, let's just Tom, check. Tom Joad. That Tom Joad. That was a gra Grapes of Wrath guy, right? I thought we did this one already. Well... This is probably a cover. Okay. Well, see what I'm saying? See. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's Woody Guthrie. Zero. Yeah, the Ballad of Tom Joad. Yeah, it's right there. Somebody but spell. it was a Woody Guthrie one. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm assuming. It's spelled wrong. R r I, 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 that ballad should be two L's, right? Yeah, I, I know, but I wasn't gonna say. It. And that's why I couldn't find it when I'm trying to look. All oh, right, no. here we go. The Ballad yes. of Tom Joad. We have done. Okay, so so we're gonna see which one is the better version. Okay. Bruce Springsteen 
Bruce Springsteen. Let's go. You see millions of people out of work. You see a blood fight over decent health care for our citizens, and you see people struggling to hold on to their homes. If Woody Guthrie were alive today, he'd have a lot to write about high times on Wall Street and hard times on Main Street. Now to join my two great guitar players, Steve Van Zandt and Nils Lofgren, I want to bring out one of the greatest guitar players in rock and roll and a great voice from Rage Against the Machine and the Night Watchman, Tom Morello. Man, I didn't read his thing. All right, so before you hear this song, here we go. <laughs> All right, so Revo says, this song was inspired by the ballad of Tom, jo it's Joad? Yeah. Uh, by Woody Guthrie, which is inspired by The Grapes of Wrath by John Steenbeck. Okay. The original version, released in 1995, was more folk in nature in the tradition of Woody Guthrie, or Pete Seeger. In 1997, Rage Against the Machine covered, but revved up in their form of alternative metal. During Springsteen's 2008 tour, Ooh. he brought on stage Tom Morello, where they, they played a new electric version of the song. This performance is from the 2009 Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, where Bruce Springsteen and Tom Morello again performed the electric version that they had introduced the year before. Don't block All us, you right. capitalist yeah. bastards. Yeah. Do Let's not block us. Out. Let's do this. The electric sh version. Shizzle, mm -hmm. whizzle, 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 whizzle. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Choppers coming up over the ridge Hot soup on a campfire under the bridge Shelter line stretching around the corner Welcome to the new world order Families sleeping in their cars in the southwest No home, no job, no peace, no rest well, the highway is alive tonight But nobody's kidding nobody about where it goes I'm sitting down here in the campfire light Searching for the ghost that Tom We find out Tom is singing. Reach a lights up a butt and takes a turn. Wait for the last shall be first and the first shall be last. In a cardboard box deep the underpants. You got a one-way ticket to the promised land. You got a hole in your belly and a gun in your hand. Put on a pillow of solid rock Bathing in the city's aqua jug Well, I always love tonight Where it's headed, everybody knows I'm sitting down here in the campfire
Now Tom said, Mom, wherever there's a cop beating a guy, wherever a hungry and born baby cries, where there's a fight against the blood and hatred in the air, look for me, Mom, I'll be there. Wherever somebody's fighting for a place to stand, for a decent job or a helping hand, wherever somebody's struggling to be free, look in their eyes, Ma, you'll see me. Go for it, yo! Oh my god, wow. okay. Uh, Showmanship! Jesus! How precise that is. fucking loot okay. <laughs> that <laughs> needed to have a metal version that, for sure yeah <laughs> yeah shout out to Guthrie but I definitely like this song yeah a lot more 100% 100% that <clears throat> guy on the guitar we talked crazy. about the content of the song already mm -hmm. uh, for the other review although lyrically this, this one has significant enough variation to where oh my gosh it, I have it, it has its own um what were you saying? Go ahead. Oh, I don't know of any variation because I thought I have... Oh. <laughs> okay, that's why. Yeah, I gonna... thought I had the Guthrie version up, but... Yeah, I wasn't... I was Guthrie. like, it was like word for word. That's because yeah, I have the... I, I'm on, I have the I, correct I, I'm on Springsteen... Uh, okay, Springsteen so... Springsteen we'll, lyrics. Yeah, kind of let, like. let us know what's different. So, there you go. All right, okay. so men walking along the... Okay, so what, what were you thinking about the song? Um, well, like what was to be honest with you, 
I really focused very little on the the lyrics because we already we already went over it. Yeah, but it's um, different lyrics though. It's well, I didn't know. Battle, I didn't know it was. The... I didn't know it was. A, it was different lyrics, so I wasn't really paying attention to the lyrics. I definitely was, agree that that was a solo of the year for sure for me. I was focusing on what was going on over there and seeing. Like, cause now I watch them because before I'd be like, oh wow, that sounded so complex. And then you'd be like, just look at what they're doing. And it would be like something really basic. I was watching this guy. I was like, no, nope, this is complex. The way yeah. he was playing and um, the way that he was bending the strings made a, a different sort of like that noise. And it was, it was very nice sounding. I really, really, really liked it. Yeah, um, a lot of the bands that came up in Rage Against the Machines era, they just added a DJ. Like Korn was touring with a DJ for like four or five years. This guy made those scratching sounds with his guitar. That shit is incredible to me. Like he 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 has no. he has. And I'm sure there's settings and technology or whatever, but they, they, he just he has such a unique voice and such unique phrasing when he does the solos. Like it's incredible. And again, like the solo that I did has had way more notes in it than Mm -hmm. that one. But, but, but the way that he manipulated everything and used those bands, I mean, it was absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. You know, he never, I never really, see, I was wondering when you were going, when you're going all over the place, that was more complex than what he was doing. Yeah. Yeah. I thought so. Yeah, but complex. I thought for sure you were gonna say it wasn't though. Okay, good. No, no, we're no. on the same page. No, I mean there there were a couple techniques that he used like for like when he was like doing the finger tapping thing and doing the, he was just showing off there. He didn't need to do it that way. Like I I'm nowhere. I mean, but but the thing is it's 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 like he he's kind of like off over here by himself a little bit like because his guitar style is so unique. Yeah. It, it's such mm-hmm. a it's such a and it's very distinct, and it kind of sounds modern and spacey. Like if you look at the solo yeah. he did for "Like a Stone," yeah, like he he just, he, I I heard all the quote hype about this dude. This is the you first did. time I've ever seen Tom Morello's solo. I didn't think I really didn't think he was that good of a guitarist <laughs> because he couldn't come up with heavy riffs like Corn did. I'm laughing now. Listen to email to Brian. Like, yeah. ah! <laughs> um, I, I'm I'm sorry. As far as new metal type riffs goes, corn corn's the best. They're they're the greatest of all time at, at those at those new metal riffs. Yeah, for sure. Um, and that's why they're still around. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> what this guy like? That's the thing about like the instrument. Like you have to reimagine it. You have to you have to think about what it could do. Exactly. Yes. You know, like like right. I said, like these not guys not just were... what it has always done, but right. what can it do? What is it capable of outside of what other people have already done with yeah, it? Yeah, and these guys, yeah, and and you know, and that's why that guy took it and he put it on the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> There's certain like progressions and things that everybody knows. There's certain progressions that everybody does. I mean, mm-hmm. my warm ups are usually you know, just going down the major yep. scale or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. like he really just showed all his chops. He he showed, hey, I can get fast. I can go crazy. I can get I can get mom seen on you bitches. Mm-hmm. But then he's like, oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hit you in the heart right here. Like mm-hmm. it just incredible. Yeah. Incredible, yeah. incredible, incredible. Um he's turn he's turning on and off a switch of the guitar to get the scratching effect. Yeah, like okay, he, he's insane. He's 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 insane. So this song was not a cover. What I'm getting from Revo and Riv is that it was it just was inspired. inspired. By it. it yeah, was inspired, mm-hmm. but it wasn't. That doesn't necessarily mean that that it was a cover. Yeah, men walking along the railroad track. My mom used to love this dude, bro. Bruce Springsteen. Oh really? Yeah, he had a stretch. Okay. He had a stretch, man, to where he was like. Like, like God almost, but it was weird because he was talking about basically blue collar Democrats, like life in America. Like that was his whole shtick. And that's why he, I think he got nicknamed the boss and everything like that. Like his whole shtick was talking about like how, how hard folks were having it, you know, sleeping in their cars, all that stuff. And so he like became a voice for, yeah. I mean, pretty much 
until the Clinton administration when we started having all those surpluses and then we started spending six dollars on coffee because we were bored and had nothing to do. <laughs> then nine eleven happened and then you know all the rest of it. So like Bruce Springsteen, man, like t- to to be able to talk about this stuff without it being sounding preachy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it 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 was so real. And I also like what he did vocally too. Like his vocal style was what I grew up hearing. Again, I wish you were into Don Francisco because if yeah. you're into Don Francisco, like you would see how he does that. And there are certain things yeah. that he does note wise between, between major and minor mm-hmm. that are really badass. That I think we could we could we could modernize. And there, there I have so many ideas. Um, <laughs> Good lyrically. Going someplace, there's no way back. Highway patrol choppers coming up over the ridge. Hot soup on a campfire under the bridge. Under the bridge, so homeless people. So you got man's by himself on a train on the train tracks. Then there's a highway patrol uh, bikes coming over the ridge. Hot soup, like you're just setting the scene. Shelter yeah. line stretching around the corner. Welcome to the new world order. Families sleeping in their cars in the southwest. No home, no job, no peace, no rest. Like... That is, and and again, it says no rest. We just talked about the Sabbath, mm-hmm. which yep. is supposed to be a rest. But he's talking about what happens when capitalism runs rampant, man. Exactly. When capitalism and that free market shit, like, and the other thing too is like when you start making money, you start seeing the things that people with a little bit of money do to not have to pay taxes and all the rest. It's it's incredible, like all the little loopholes and things. So it turns out that like your regular blue collar American, not very sophisticated is getting worked yeah. percentile wise versus what yeah. people with money and influence are making. Like the whole system is, in, it, it, yeah. it's what, like I said, it's what happens when capitalism runs amok and people go, no, that's crony capitalism. It's because, you know, people are, you know, people are not operating it correctly. It's like, no, dude, there's no, you cannot have crony capitalism without capitalism. Umar Johnson said this. I thought it was really interesting. He said it is impossible for democracy and capitalism to coexist. Hmm. Because there's always going to be outliers that have billions and trillions of dollars. In, In two years, we'll probably crown our first trillionaire. And because of that, because they have so much capital, they can buy off Mm -hmm. politicians. And even if you get one out of 30 who's got some integrity, there's 29 other people who don't who will shut them up, which has essentially been Bernie Sanders' career, which in my view, honestly, I I think after 2016, he was done, done like forever. And he decided he wasn't going to fight anymore. And, you know, he put in his time, whatever. But, like, that first verse, man, just really, like, yeah. knocks you on your ass because it's like, yo, man, these these families are fucking struggling. Yeah. Dude. You got homeless people under a bridge. You got mm-hmm. the highway patrol. He's not doing much better than the guy under the bridge. I mean, it's just crazy. Well, the highway. He, Go ahead. He pulls out a prayer book out of his sleeping bag. Preacher likes lights up a butt and he takes a drag. I mean, that also tells you because usually the pastor isn't smoking. But, like... If the, if the pastor's at a point where they're... It, to me, it's almost like, okay, all the facades are down now and people are who they are. He, the, the pastor's going to smoke. Stuff's gotten pretty serious. But you know what it also sounded like? What was that book? Um, remember that guy? He was the traveling pastor. Gra- was it Grapes of Wrath? Yeah. Yeah, kind of reminded me of that. I mean, I'm pretty sure it was Jode. I was pretty sure that's the character that the, the whole thing was based on in the first place. Tom oh, Jode. it is. Yeah, Ballad oh, well. Tom Jode. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, he, he pulls a prayer out of his sleeping bed. Yeah, so that that was the guy. That was Casey, right? That was the pastor and yeah. the, the thing. His name was Casey. I think so. Yeah. Uh, it was a Jim Casey. He had he had a th- that was really the first remember. time I got yeah, introduced to I think so. that was the first time I got introduced to Christ figure as a motif in literature was Grapes of Wrath. Yeah. Shout out shout out to my uh, Truman High School. Yeah, but but the pet he was he was like a womanizer, right? That dude. That pastor. <laughs> yeah, like that's how he got intro, intro he got yeah, introduced I in the book. So. He was knocking them girls out yeah, in the back. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> he's still righteous though, but you know. <laughs> he's still righteous. No, he said he felt bad for it. I'm pretty sure. Well, that's what I'm saying. It just shows you how righteous he is. Right. He's knocking out all the bras. He felt bad about it. And he, he was like so conflicted because people were so moved in his messages. Yeah. But he knew after what he was about to do, and it was like he, he was so conflicted. 
Uh, wherever there's a cop beating a guy, wherever a hungry newborn cries. See, that's that's him talking to us right there. Shout out to that. He talked about his. He, he told his mom like, "Yo, I saw a cop doing that shit on the on the TV." Mm. Where there's fight against the blood and hatred in the air, look for me. Yeah, this is a really hopeful song. Waiting for when the last shall be first and the first shall be last. That's mm. a crazy line. That is a crazy, yeah. crazy line because, like, right now it just doesn't seem like the meek are inheriting the earth, man. It seems like the yeah. more arrogant. Yeah. The more arrogant you are, the more crazy you are, the yeah. more you yeah. can lie. You can get on here and say all types of crazy shit about people. Mm -hmm. You can be wrong and never retract it. Yeah. You, know, you can just say all types of crazy shit about yeah. people. Two people will never retract it. And then if you have like some kind of like integrity, like you will post the, the, the video of like 30 minutes berating this person and then you'll put up a little tweet. Oh, I was wrong about this little thing here and here. It's like, no, you put that out on video. Video. How about you correct it on video, you fucking weirdo? But like, mm -hmm. it, it's. <sighs> Tom said, "Mom, whenever there's a cop beating a guy, wherever a hungry newborn cries, when there's fight against the blood and the hatred in the air, look for me. I'll be there. Where there's somebody fighting for a place to stand or a decent job or a helping hand, whenever somebody's struggling to be free, look in their eyes, mom. You'll see me. So again, th this is we had this in the other songs too, where it's like the spirit of the person." And the spirit of the idea mm -hmm. was going to... And it was really fascinating when... Uh, it was two people, Ben Ben Webb and Jordan Peterson. When Jordan Peterson said... Um, These ideas that we possess, it's not very clear if, if the truth isn't in reverse. Namely, that we are possessed by ideas. Not that we have ideas, but that ideas possess us. Boy, isn't that interesting? And, and, and you know, Ben had the similar thing where he said, oh, do sounds want to be heard? Where you're attributing some sort of agency right. to these things that we yeah. think are non-corporeal. Yeah. And maybe he's just doing it metaphorically, but I'm not, I'm not particularly, I'm not particularly sure. But what he's saying here is like the spirit of what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. The spirit of equity and equality and yeah. the American way and dreams and being rewarded commensurate to, to the type of work you put out. All those things are like in the rear view mirror. But in this song, like there might be a hopeful way to get back there. Mm -hmm. um, but his ability to talk about like. And, and honestly, like this group of people is a group of people that's left behind right now. Like, nobody's talking for these people anymore. These are le middle class workers. Like, and to, you know. Right. Rivers Point, we're not just talking about Democrats. We're just talking about the average American who's stressed the fuck out. Yeah. Trying to make ends meet. You know, all that. Like, he. Yeah. He, he showed up at a time when those people needed him. And it's like, I wonder, like, what's going on in music to where there isn't a guy like yeah. that that's. that's that's directly addressing it's weird to me because it seems like the audience nowadays is way more politically astute way more politically sophisticated mm -hmm. you got i have conversations almost daily people saying should we abandon electoral politics blah 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 people are so sophisticated the shit that i'm talking to with regular people my age was the shit that like my parents were talking about like mm -hmm. yeah for sure and they were old you know your parents are, mm -hmm. are aging but like there's not a voice like that right now. There, there's nobody where people can turn and say, yeah, that's how I feel. And it really does. Yeah, but do you think that music now that's being created does much in the political realm? Or does it now kind of seem more separate? The arts and the... <sighs> yeah, it's such a good question. I, 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 don't, I don't think that um, that element is there anymore. Because we're in what's called an attention economy. And, you know, most, you know, and, and they'll tell you once you buy these YouTube courses and no, we're not going to sell it. We're not, I don't think we're ever going to sell a YouTube course. Um, but it, it, there's a lot of things about YouTube that make it very, very difficult to be successful while putting out a message like this, because this message does not have a boogeyman to murder yeah you know like the rhetoric right now is like folks want to kill each other 
So if you look at this song, like he's just advocating for the average American. He's not saying, fuck you capitalist pigs, blah, blah, blah. He's not saying that. What he's saying is, this is a struggle. Hmm. This is a struggle. And I am speaking for not myself, but for millions of people. Yeah. And if you want to see how much they really believe this shit, come to one of my shows. And like, if you are an astute politician, you have got to account for that. You have to. And that's something that, that people knew back in the day. Now, because the market is so oversaturated mm -hmm. and you can put something up on SoundCloud that gets 2 million views, mm -hmm. now it's even more difficult to actually say something like what this dude is saying. But what he was able to do was he was able to couch this stuff in a in a in a delicious audio. I love what he did in the in in the verse mm -hmm. in the verse uh, lines relative to you know major and minor scaling. Yep. He, yep. It was just a really 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 good song that made you really think. Uh, shout out to Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. I, I wish I could have been at one of those shows like in the oh, early nineties yeah. just to get the experience. You know. Yeah. Uh, this is song of the night so far for me. Nine dot nine. Ooh, nine nine point eight for me. All right, guys, we got one more song coming up for you, beautiful people. We'll be right back. We shall return. I'm Ben. I'm sorry. If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It sorry says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you so we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together and that helps determine what songs that we do. <laughs> the alliances hang out on Discord. Shh. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash and sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Uh, shout out to Gaelic Nordic Girl. Congratulations uh, on, on that consideration. We have one more song for you. What, what are we congratulating? Uh, I think they're going to try again for another baby. Ooh, the yay. name of this song is Solidarity Forever. Right. Pete Seeger uh, is, oh, and this was picked by River. He says a small intro that should be credited to Joe Glazer as he introduced the song 50 years after Julia Ward Howe wrote the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Hey. Ralph Chaplin, a poet and organizer for the industrial workers of the world, wrote Solidarity Forever. The idea had come to him while he was in West Virginia, helping the coal miners during one of their great strikes. Chaplin said, I wanted a song to be full of revolutionary fervor and to have a chorus that was singing and defiant. The song has been sung many times, at many strikes and many protests. One recent one at the Starbucks unionization strike by Billy Bragg and those workers at the strike. You can even find video of it. Yikes. All right. Yeah, I got to say, man, fuck Starbucks for that, bro. What like, happened? They, 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 what did they, they do? They projected themselves as like this 
progressive, yeah, Seattle. They, they're out there union busting just as Blake Bezos was doing. As a matter of fact, they were doing really shady shit. I was following one of the one of the players there. They termed her for no reason. All types of crazy shit. All right, here we go, guys. Here we go. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Let's do it. Yeah, that's the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Yeah. So he, I guess he's using the same tune and progression, but ha has different lyrics. I see what you did there, homie. Let's go. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. For the Union makes us strong. When the Union's inspiration through the workers' blood shall run, there can be no power greater anywhere beneath the sun. Yet what force on earth is weaker than the feeble strength of one? But the union makes us strong. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. For the union makes us strong. It is we who plow the prairie. Built the cities where they trade, dug the mines and built the workshops, endless miles of railroad laid. Now we stand outcast and starving, mid the wonders we have made, but the union makes us strong. Solidarity forever! Taken untold millions that they never toil to earn But without our brain and muscle not a single wheel can turn We can break their haughty power, gain our freedom when we learn That the union makes us strong Solidarity forever Solidarity forever Solidarity forever In our hands is placed a power greater than their hoarded gold, greater than the might of atoms magnified a thousandfold. We can bring to birth a new world from the ashes of the old, for the union makes us strong. Solidarity forever. Solidarity forever. Yeah. Um, we are the only reaction channel, I guarantee you, that's going to do a review of that song. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely, definitely influenced by Marx, man. Definitely influenced by Marx, for uh -huh. sure. Yeah. Um, you know, Marx, Marx had an interesting idea. He essentially was like, you need capitalism to create like a superstructure and an infrastructure. Once that get, gets created, skip the capitalism and have the workers take over the means of production. Like, that was his idea. It's kind of like, it's a little bit, uh, a little yeah. bit crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 here's the thing for me, right? Like, the union makes a strong solidarity forever. I mean, it's no secret that um, there is a lot of corruption in in these unions. Like, mm. you know, the whole Jimmy okay. Hoffa thing. No, I'm like, not familiar with the, the Jimmy corruption Jimmy Hoffa's in the a unions. dude. He was a union organizer, but mm. he was working with the mafia. and uh, To accomplish what? Money laundering, all types of shit. Because think about it. If you, if you, if you have influence with the union, right, mm -hmm. I can then go to the boss and shake him down, right? I can be like, hey, listen, this guy, he's our guy. So if you don't give me X, you're gonna lose X because we're gonna have a we're gonna do a strike. Because I got the union guy in my back pocket. 
right? So instead of threatening you like, yo, be really terrible, be really fucked up if your if your pizza shop just blew up, mm-hmm. be terrible. They got a little bit more sophisticated. They started working with the unions, and then you can leverage the union guys to oh, get wow, whatever you want. And okay. So there was a lot of corruption. Wow. My, my point in saying that is not to discount the song. It's simply to point out. Because I don't believe, I obvious, everybody knows I don't believe that Marxism is a solution. But I don't believe that capitalism is a solution either. Mm-hmm. And in my view, both groups make the same mistake. Namely, to underestimate or not account for human, the human sinfulness and, and the guarantee of human corruption. Mm. It's, not, yeah. it's not that yep. if you give somebody too much power for too long, they may. It's that they will. And so if you construct a, you have to construct a society and a monetary theory with that as the forefront. That to me has been fatal for everybody. You get a bunch of people applying secular standards to an economic theory. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there's, there, there's, there's entire disciplines and ideas that you're not going to be familiar with because of that. So like... I still don't know what the ideal economic system is. I know it's not capitalism. I also know it's not Marxism. I, I, I get I get a little, I don't know, worry, worried is a term, but I, the eat the rich language is, uh, it, it's always bothered me. Cause I'm like, yo man, if somebody worked in front of all that risk. Like who are you to tell them they don't deserve those millions? Mm-hmm. I mean, Elon Musk works, you know, mm-hmm. 16 hours a day, like, Look, bro. Yeah. I I got other stuff I'd like to do. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. so, like. Yeah, man. Like it, it. It's if you don't account for human sinfulness, we're always gonna end up in this place where millions of people die, and there's gonna be unjust. You know, there's gonna be a lack of justice. And I think if if you look at our checks and balances system, like our forefathers pretty much figured that out. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't need checks and balances. Um. So there you go. So like I, I I support the unions conceptually. I just I just don't have this idea that all union people are like saints or whatever. Right. You know they're right. they're, they're just like all the rest of us, and they have propensities toward corruption. corruption. Yeah, exactly. Just as much as the CEO does. Mm-hmm. And um, but there's still something really. I I don't think like in the Western world, man, like. I, I just wish people understood like history. This shit does not happen. Yeah. Where women are like, no, we're being mistreated. We're gonna go out to the streets. We're gonna hit the streets. Like, like, like you get to hit the streets. You get to capture attention. You get to speak out against your boss. You get to speak out against the president. Like that is a huge, huge gift that we have as Americans. And it, it's also something that I think we should be proud of. Look at look at all human history. We're the only empire global empire where you're allowed to shit talk the emperor without fearing you're going to get killed that's huge mm-hmm. that's like unheard of i mean mm-hmm. for you can do, do that in jamaica because we for a change, while trade out our presidents so nobody can get like that big of an ego like if you're the only guy forever and for always like i think that that inflates your ego more uh-huh as opposed to what where you don't let anybody say anything because, like, it's you're the sole ruler. But, like, if you're, like, in and out, like, you're not always the president. So, like, your your ego probably gets inflated while you're the president. Yeah. But, like, it doesn't have the time that, like, Kim Jong-un, you know what I mean, from his entire... 100%. River's saying here, I'd say while unions can be corrupted, you still need, in my opinion, workplace democracy. Otherwise, a boss... An unelected and powerful entity replacing with elected, uh, recallable folks. Yeah, no, I I agree. I think I think the, the 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 current system is massively unjust, especially if you're operating within an at will state. Um, so yeah, I, I like the term workplace democracy. I do believe that workers should be able to determine, have self determination for certain things. I I just haven't. I haven't been able to really eke out where I stand with this stuff. 
Um, I want people to be more generous, and I don't have a problem with government mandated generosity. I don't care. I, yeah, I, I don't have a problem with that at all. Um, I mean, hell, if the tax system yeah, wasn't the way it was, I wouldn't my, voluntarily My pay. issue with it is, is that the, our government has proved that they're they, they're not capable of that. They just took a fourteen billion or whatever and sent that over to Ukraine for their war over that. One hundred forty. One hundred forty billion. Holy shit! Okay, one hundred forty <laughs> billion. Digits, yeah. Oh my gosh. So when they're doing stuff like that, they obviously can't be trusted to take more of our money to give it to to people. I don't trust the government to do such <laughs> and, a thing. And the real issue is, is very simple. It's a question that Tucker asked a bunch. How does this help us? Mm -hmm. I can see how it helps you. I can see how it helps Exxon and Chevron. Right. And the, 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 the two specific groups I called out in the song were the two groups it's that posted crazy. landmark. In that order. In that order. <laughs> they posted landmark I landmark said, uh, revenue <laughs> uh, off of the Russia-Ukraine crisis. But let's keep, let's keep pretending our government actually gives a fuck about those poor people over there in Ukraine. Their government doesn't care about them people. But like... I, 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 there, there's got to be another monetary theory out there, um, because I, I, I don't see the logic in a group that's that doesn't front load the risk, doesn't do the initial work. Um, I could tell you as a person who runs their own business, it, it is a, you got to have a certain kind of mental constitution to be able to do that shit, and like, th there are so many pitfalls and things that you run into and. Uh competition and all these other things it's it's brutal out there so one out of a hundred of these folks like end up being successful and you want to tell that guy that the people that he's employed actually should be able to you know make these major decisions for the company that he started yeah that he risked yeah. that he missed time with his family and, for like I, and... I i have a hard i have a hard i have a hard time with that idea yeah and literally like the two reasons why we're doing the, the businesses that we're doing. One is for our own children, for their future. And then the second thing is because we want to be able to make the lives of other people around us, their lives easier. So it's like both of those would get taken from you for all that risk. So you wouldn't have a future for your kids because it just got all past the workers. And then on top of that, you wouldn't we wouldn't be able to be as generous with what we were going to get from our stuff because it would also be spread out to a bunch of people. So, right. like, literally the two reasons why we work when we don't want to or we do, we do the schedule that we do or whatever is because we want to be able to help our kids and help. And you can't take both of that from us and expect us to still work those businesses. I mean, I don't have that in me. Maybe you have that in you to... <laughs> work like that for like to pass that all to everybody else and not for our i don't i'd be like oh well in that case yeah my, my kids my kids are motivation to start to finish yeah you know but at the same time at the same time you cannot let these millionaires but whatever me bernie sanders anybody you cannot let those people dictate the lives of the people that they're working for and to a degree you do that with scheduling for example is one right like so it, it, there's there's a lot of tough questions that i don't think anybody has the answers for right now because i don't think anybody has properly diagnosed the issue to me the issue is very simple relative to to unions and anything in general is that we are selfish and because we're selfish and we love ourselves, we have to implement laws that force us, that, that make us focus on self-interest instead of other people. So we're in a situation now where unions are necessary because of the, the sinfulness and the selfishness of the human heart. Yeah. So unions become necessary. The union is an, is an emblem to the fact that the, the employee does not trust the employer, nor should they. Mm -hmm. If you have half a brain, you should not trust any of the heads of these companies for anything. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm completely and totally 100,000% with you. It's just that you, you got people who are really simple people, man. And this is one of the things that happened like when the, during the whole Trump situation the first time around. Why I was like so offended when they kept stereotyping every Trump supporter as a racist. Nah, man. There's a lot of regular folks just like this that their jobs were getting sent overseas. Mm -hmm. Hillary showed up and saying, we're going to shut down coal, learn yeah, the code, blah, like, blah, blah. Yeah, these people are, these this people are like, what the fuck? This is all we know. Like, this is all we know. 
mean? It's all we know. So how disconnected. But then, like, and River's been keeping us up to date about, like, the, the there's been all these massive train derailments, like people dying, all types of craziness. Nobody gets held accountable. Like, this is what happens when you're 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 in a seats in Laban where capital is more important than people. Um, but on the other side, I understand my capitalist friends because they're like, how are you going to enforce that law? Because are you just going to hand over the business that you stayed up all these crazy hours, stressed yourself out for all the time? You're just going to hand that over to people who, who, who played video games all day? Like, I'm not doing that shit. No, it's like, well, I, then how are you going to, how do you, how do you presume that money is going to get extracted from your hands then? Like, yeah, no, I just think that it should be, you know, how like the, the rich find all these loopholes to like not pay taxes. Yeah. I think that should not be a thing. Like, I think the more money that you make, the more taxes you would pay. We're definitely going to do that though. The, the more, the more. Oh, well, yeah, but that's because our plan is to take that money and to help more people with it. Of course I would do that. One thousand yeah. percent. Yeah. But, but I'm saying if you're in a society where every it just goes like that, where the rich are not, it, if people were doing that, then there would be no reason for it. you when you'd have to make the law. If everybody was like, well, how can I make the most money so I can help the most people? Yeah, like, the laws for the lawless. Exactly. Right? So like, yeah, you, you, you know, God graced us with, you know, good ideas and, and gener generous hearts to a degree. That's yeah. undeniable that God has given us that, but, yeah. you know. <laughs> Part of me, I, I forgot the name of this book, but it was a book about, I think it's like my fifth grade teacher's an alien or something like that. <laughs> and in <laughs> the book. brought that one up a couple times. In the, it, yeah, it, it, it always hit me. I wish I could read that book again. In the book, there was one character, he was like the school bully, and like, they called this giant intergalactic council to decide what to do about this kid. Mm -hmm. And so the other, you know, the kid that was getting bullied by the, the by the the main subject, he comes up to this alien, and the alien's like, "Yeah, we're deciding whether or not we're gonna release him." And he's like, "What? Like they were gonna kill him?" Oh my god! And they're like, "Well," and he's like, "Well, what did he do?" And he's like, "You said it yourself." And the guy's like, "What are you talking about?" He's like. He was cruel for no reason because he said that this guy Biff was cruel for no reason, and to them that was like this unthinkable, horrible, you know, crime. And they're like, "What?" And the guy's like, "What are you talking about? This is a guy that like sets bugs on fires with his microscope, with, with his little magnifying glass." Like they were completely horrified, you know. It, it, yeah. But it just—it was so interesting reading that and being like, "Yo, our standards this? for what we uh, are—that uh, might be it, yeah." I'm pretty sure that's it, actually. Our standards for what we accept, you know, people to go through. Yeah. It's like, it, it's like the whole frog in the water thing. Like, oh, these people on Amazon, they're going to the bathroom on the floor. Oh, these people over here, they're taking, you know, acetaminophen or whatever Jeez, it is to keep um, staying up. This guy's taking speed. I mean, shit is inc it's, it's incredible. It's unbelievable. Um, I, I, I loved tonight, man. Like, I, I, it just it just makes me feel like now more than ever we need more songs like this, mm -hmm. like th that that talk about you know the plight of of these people. I mean, if anything, for the politicians, so that at least they can style their 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 campaigns, even though they they only commit to doing two percent of it. If, if they could read that intel from like a Bruce Springsteen show and come up with a, you know, yeah. a, a plan for Reagan and Bush, like, I feel like we could do this again. It's not that difficult. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway, that's where I'm at. What do you get the song? Uh, well, I mean, it was not super creative, obviously, the sound, because <laughs> it came from another song uh -huh. um i got where they were going you know and i do think that th that there's truth in like for the union makes us strong like the idea that when we all come together not just in the union sense but but for anything like it, it takes us coming together on something for us to make movement in a certain direction if you know we all kind of fire off separately it doesn't have as much that's why we have the more people you get involved in a movement the more traction the movement can get 
So I I agree with that. I, I do agree that you know we are we do get stronger when we can come together and we can kind of put down our differences or we can appreciate and understand each other's differences and um, make amends where we need to. I think that, that that all that stuff is good. But but in this song, like I thought that was crazy what you brought up about the the unions. It doesn't surprise me, like going by human nature, but it was also kind of crazy to hear that the unions <laughs> doing stuff like that like wow okay oh, yeah. um but and again that's not to diss the unions it's just to illustrate you know human the human propensity for sil sinfulness yeah. that you could know how corruption feels then create a group to combat yeah. up corruption and then be the most corrupt person of all time yeah you know like it, it's important because it's like this is a righteous cause i believe this is a righteous cause but what happens is just because you have a righteous cause doesn't mean that you're righteous. And it doesn't mean that the actions that you took to bring it about were righteous either. Mm -hmm. That's very important. A lot of people have this Machiavellian understanding. Hey, as long as it turned out good, it was good. No, like you can have a good outcome with bad motives and bad application like that. That's a thing. Mm -hmm. And so like we, we but but when you don't operate that way and you say, OK, Capital is a barometer by which I'm going to judge whether or not this was the right action. So if you take capital away from that from that recipe, then what is the action? Then on what basis are you going to judge any of those actions as to whether they were successful or, or you're going to have to have a new yep. primary value system, yeah. which is completely antithetical. The games that we play, Monopoly, like all these things are antithetical to living a uh, fiscally responsible life. I think it's actually irresponsible to hoard up all that capital and let people around you die. I think that's irresponsible. Oh, now like like I, I, I've got a son, he's 17 years old, and if I sent them off on a desert island and I came back and everybody was dead except for him because he fed himself, you know, whatever, like, we would have a problem. So it's like, we have to think about those things from that perspective, like, mm -hmm. yo, like, is there any shred of patriotism left? Like, mm. yo, I'm not going to let an American suffer this way. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, uh, I don't know. Something. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Really, really like the song. 9.5 for me. Would you give that? Eight. Solidarity forever. Okay. Eight. Shout out to everybody. Uh, shout out to Riv. Thank you for the detailed, uh, yeah. the detailed breakdowns. Guys, yeah. you don't always have to do it the way that uh, Riv or Revo did it. Hey, the, the Riv Revo, we should have we should have did something with that at the banner yeah. up there. Like you guys don't have to do it that way. That's just that's just the way they do it. It's obviously very cool for us. I love the historical context. Yeah, that adds a lot yeah. to me. I'm just letting you guys know we appreciate it. You don't necessarily have to do it. it if you do noticed, do it though. when you're we're scheduled for D, for DJ, we really appreciate it. My favorite song tonight was Bread and Roses. Obviously, meaning behind it, the song itself, her voice, that was the song of the night for me, for sure. Inspiring. Hmm? Yeah, Bread and Roses was tight, but yeah. I'm going to have to go with the Tom Morello joint. Yeah, that's because you're not a woman, so I understand. Yeah, in this case, uh, uh, study this shit because it matters to me. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I'll, I'll look more into it, Riv, for sure, if, it, if, if it's important to you. Um I've I've uh, I've gotten a lot of my uh, Marxist stuff, my worker stuff from you as well. Um, so yeah, anything you send me, I'll definitely look at it for sure, for sure, for sure. All right, uh, you guys, we got another stream coming tomorrow. Yeah, shout out to the big so... homie Scoochie, Scoochie who was listening to our Pearl Jam review and then saw the notification. Thanks for coming through. Uh, we're leaving now. Ah, but we'll be back tomorrow. We've been on for four hours. Yeah, tomorrow, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be there uh, or be... Square. <laughs> been out. Sorry, out. Gone. Is a, is a Communist Manifesto actually good to read? Yes. You absolutely should read it. It's required reading. For sure. For sure. All right. We're out of here, guys. Been out. Sorry, out.